bottom apartment. Fuck. B, 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 B. You're now tuned into the Apartment 5B podcast, where we chop it up about hip hop, R and B, sports, love, and life. Hosted by Kill. 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 What's good, what's good, what's good? You are tuning to Apartment 5B, hosted by your man, Kill. I got my squad with me. As always, I will push $20, so she's on strike again. As soon as my cousin gives me back the money that nigga owes me, Porsche, you got your money. What's going on, miss? Uh, not a whole lot. Sorry, I, I, I don't have a camera today. Um, but it's very good to be here. So good to see everybody. Yeah, I'm so excited about this show. All right, no doubt. I got my brother Rel from the 215. What's going on, good brother? What's good? Ain't much, man. Just happy to be here as always. All right, no doubt. My brother Vern out the ATL. What's going on, fam? Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah. It's good to see everybody except for the people we can't see. Hey, you know, I, I get it. You go on strike, you, you can't cross the picket line. I'm just glad I got her on the show for the night. So, but I get it. Uh, my brother Vague out of Brooklyn. What's going on, fam? It's good, man. Chilling, man. Happy to be here. Gonna right. be happy, but we're gonna be happy in a second. I hear you. I, I hear you, Playboy. I hear you. This week um, is brought to us by Porsche. So, Porsche, why don't you set us off with where the topic came from and what we're gonna be chopping it up about? Yeah, so. Um... I was actually on the phone with one of my homies, um, good good friend, uh, very dope dude. Um, we often talk about hip hop, and he kind of hit me up like, "Yo, I have such a dope idea for for Kill for you. Um, if you guys wanted to like take this to the show," and I was like, "All right, cool. Like, what was it?" And he was like, "It's kind of like a Who Wore It Best, but sample edition. So like the equivalent of Hollywood's Who Wore It Best, but." who used the sample the best and we kind of talked about um you know like he he fired off some some tracks and then we kind of talked about it very like you know informally over the phone and then i was like you know what this is totally kills bag and i definitely need to tell him um about this topic and i'm sure he'll be able to do great things with it and here we are and so big huge shout out to chris um he's amazing so yeah that's where the topic came from no doubt, no doubt. And for people who have ever watched my pin tweet, me and they used to do this thing called Daddy Daughter Digging, where we basically would do the same thing. I play her the original sample, two people who used it, and then she would have to decide who she liked, which one she liked. So that's what we're going to be doing. What I did for the team was I put together, I think it's about 21 joints on here. I don't know if we'll get through all of them or not. Um, but I, I, I sent them all links with the original samples two to three people who use them and then i have an order like who used them first if they came out at the same time everything like that so we can kind of chop it up about this portion the thing that i love about this topic it was on point because i was having a combo about maybe a month ago with a cat on twitter and i was saying yo i really wasn't messing with uh Nas if i rule the world because i'm like he just rhyming over beanie's friends and he was like well what's wrong with rhyming over a beat somebody already used and i'm like you know come on bro like it, it's it's a hip hop rule. It's like an unwritten hip hop rule that you just don't do. It. You know what I mean? Like we all know what the track masters. For people who may not know what the track masters would do, Tone was the party boy. Pope was the studio dude. Tone would go to the clubs when the DJ would throw on the old school set. He would listen to see what what got people, you know, hype and everything like that. Then would take that back to Pope and be like, Yo, let's do such and such because yo, you know, DJ threw on friends and niggas lost their mind. So if we get knives from no friends, then niggas gonna lose their mind. So for me, it's like I, I guess we could one talk about that. For me, it's an unwritten rule. You just don't do that. You know, in Scratch Magazine, they used to have this section where they'd ask the producers, you know, what beat do you wish you made? And Primo may say something like, yo, I wish I would have made Cream, or RZA may say, I wish I would have made, you know, they reminisce over you. But if it wasn't an unwritten rule, then you would just do that. You would just be like, oh shit, like Cream was dope. You know what, fuck it, I'm gonna use that same stuff. But in hip hop, there's like 
oh shit, man, you know, he used it first. Fuck it. Yes, we can't use it. You know, or if we're going to use it, let's switch it up. Let's do something to it to do it different or something like that. Um, so, but what do you feel like, Porsche? What do you feel? Do you feel like it's okay for somebody? And let's not use they reminisce over you because we know how you feel about that. Let's just say, how would you have felt if you heard another MC come out six months after you heard Jay Woo's Come Clean? Do you think. Like, would you be like, oh, that's dope that you use the exact same sample, even if they switch? So, up is it is it like is it like Ashanti using the One More Chance remix beat? Is that kind of the same thing of what you're talking about? Nah, but one of the joints on here is a R and B joint, so we will talk about that. But no, I'm talking about in hip hop. Me in Vegas, okay. me in Vegas in 1994, 95. Whenever I think Come Clean came out, like 94, 95. If J. Rue has come clean, everybody loves the sample, and then you see Vegas rhyming over the come clean sample produced by Kill. What are you gonna think about that? Are you gonna think that's dope, or are you gonna think that's whack? Um, it, it's, it's kind of like what you said. It's like an unwritten rule, and that's why producers really um, protect how they create the beat because I feel like, you know, there are some producers we know that will never show how a beat is made or what they do or even what samples they use because they don't, they want to avoid this. So for me, yeah, I, I don't think it's totally cool. Um, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's the dopest thing to do ever, but it happens, I uh, guess. No doubt. Vic, what about you? What you think, bro? I think if it was, wait, when that come out? 94? Let's say 94. Let's say the 12-inch right. came out in 94. I want to say maybe Sunrise is dropped in 95, but Come Clean and the Dirty Rotten was, you know, definitely out before the album dropped. So let's say 94. So six right, months so. after the six months after you heard Come Clean and everybody loves it. Now you hear produced by Kill, Rel and Vern got a group rhyming over the same sample. I think 94 version of me would have been like, that shit is whack do that um because that when i heard that come clean beat i was just like oh shit this is otherworldly so especially at that time to hear somebody else do it even a year later i just would have disregarded that shit just off the beat could have been right spitting yeah. could have been crazy <clears throat> but today i feel like there's a way to do that right and i don't know if it's the Maybe the timing makes it a little bit different. Like your, your example of, you know, someone uh, just using it and then here comes another producer using it in the same way. But I think, for example, and this isn't the same thing, but I kind of like it. Meek Mill's been uh, doing that a lot, right? Yeah, With like this, what was it, What's Beef? Uh, yeah, what like making almost like track versions of them, but they kind of maintain the sound you know, they're updated a little bit. I think right. I like that um, a, a little bit more than someone just verbatim sampling uh, the same right. thing. All right, no doubt. Vern, what about you? Um, This may sound uh, cliche or whatever, but if it's dope, <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think 2022, I don't even think the rules necessarily apply like they did i mean there was a like a jedi ninja code back like we was in college like vague said but now man you know if if, if the song is dope and i guess that's subjective as well but i would prefer not to it's like it's so many other things you could do find it find another part of it flip it a different way do something but it's kind of lazy but i mean people lazy so Right. No doubt. And bro, what you think, bro? Yeah, I think in ninety four like like they said, ninety four I'd have been like that's wild corny, but I mean, like now I don't know, it's just I don't know that <laughs> the rules have changed a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But again, I would say like this, depending on how you how you actually do it. Like if you make it dope or you know what I'm saying, or if you flip it in your own way then I, I could probably rock with it, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't prefer it, you know what I'm saying? But it don't disgust me like it would, <laughs> <laughs> like it would have back in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Right. All right, no doubt, no doubt. Look, the first joint we are going to get into is, and I don't even want to say what the name of the samples are, 
because I don't want people talking about kill you sample snitching in 2022. Even though who sample.com, everybody knows. Yeah, I mean, right. Even when, you there, I don't want to be the sample snitch. And so, so there was a sample you. So we're going to talk about there are two lines in music that I disagree with, and I think they are lies from the pit of hell. One is Eric Badu's I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. If you're an artist and you're sensitive about your shit, do not press upload. Because the second you press upload, you will now open yourself up to critique. So that's number one. So you got mad people be like, yo, kill, I'm gonna play you my shit, but I'm sensitive. Nigga, then don't play me your shit. Just play that shit to yourself. Play that shit in your whip. Play that shit in your AirPods. Keep that shit to yourself. Because the second you press upload or the second you let somebody hear it, you are now open to criticism. The second line I disagree with, and people always get at me on the timeline about the stands and the fans. I'm explaining to y'all the difference between a fan and a stand. I'm about to say something that I, I totally disagree with that was said by one of my favorite MCs ever about a track that was produced by one of my GOAT producers ever. And it's by my second favorite hip hop group ever. And as Gangstar, the other line I disagree with is rap is an art, you can't own no loops. It's how you hook them up with your rhyme style truth. Now, of course, when I first heard Take It Personal, I was like, all right, that's, you know, that's a dope line. I didn't know who he was talking about. Word gets to hear that he's talking about YZ. Now, YZ was this rapper out of Trenton, New Jersey. You know what I mean? South Jersey. Power 99 and 86 used to play a lot of YZ, the Crown Rulers, a lot of people who was from South mm -hmm. Jersey was damn near like Philly rappers. You know, for years I thought they was all from Philly because they played them so much. And the name of the song was called In Control of Things. And it's yeah. still to, my, to this day one of my favorite songs ever. So what happened was they used this sample. I won't say what it is because I don't want to be sample snitching. So just go look up YZ. And they used it. YZ used the sample. Now, 1988, uh, Gangstar comes out with their debut album No More Mr. Nice Guy And on the title cut They use the exact same beat The exact same way No chopping, no flipping, no nothing Now, to put a, you know, an asterisk on it Primo will tell you that he was not really producing yet He was, you know, 86 This was, 88, these were the times You would just go to the studio with your records And the engineer would kind of put it together for you But it hit me like because I'm like, yo, bro, Google, how do you get to make up this line, nigga? And you the nigga who stole some shit. That's like a that's nigga going to the, right. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, it's like that's like going to the mall, stealing some sneakers and getting arrested and being like, nah, you, 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 you can steal it. Rules, you can do whatever you want. You can take some sneakers, right. and you hook it up. And the other part that's so crazy about that line is how you hook them up with the rhyme style truth. I would think if you're saying something like that, you would mean you changed it. You did something different to it. And it, we have some, I have some examples in here of chop jobs where you can yeah. see that the person did something different yeah. to it. So you would think coming out of Guru's mouth that there was a different type of track. But so to me, that's a lot from the pit of hell because nigga, you're the thief. You are the one who did it. And like you said, back in 94, I find it real hard to believe that if I would have used the same come clean sample six months or a year after Primo, that Primo would have been like, oh, it's cool. Like Guru said, it's how you hook it up. No, niggas would have been like, yo, this motherfucking kill. Who the fuck this nigga killed using the same sample? We didn't right. do that. I'm not forgetting in the Scratch magazine, they were interviewing the beat miners and they was like, yo, what beat you wish you made? He said, yo, we had that Les McCann record that Prem used for 10 Crack Commandments for years. We never thought to use it like that. But, you know, too bad, Prem used it, so it's off the table now. Like, that's the whole point of a producer is that for us, it's off the table now. Like, we, we can't use it unless we're going to do something different with it. But let's get started with that joint right there. So we're gonna get started with the in control of things and the basically the the no more Mr. Nice Guy from Gangstar. Porsche, which track you heard the original? Which track did you like better, the YZ or the No More Mr. Nice Guy by Gangstar? I like the No More Mr. Nice Guy by Gangstar. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is, well, I. For me, like when I went back and listened to all of these tracks, I, I was kind of trying to think like when someone says I, I used a sample, to me that means like a small part or not a, you know, not a really obvious part. It's like a little like, you know, taster of, so to speak. Um, so I really like favored the, the track that used it 
lightly and then made it their own. And to me, Gangstar did that. Like at the beginning of YZ's track, it's like a whole, it's the exact same, it's the exact same track as the original sample. You know what I mean? So for me, um, I just like Primo Scratches in there. And to me, I think that it was used as a, a sample should, should be used. Like how okay. I would be. I, was gonna I get what you're saying. The, the intro, uh, the, he used the intro, but once the beat starts, like once the beat drops, it's the exact same way that Preem used it. I mean, right. now, like you said, part, you like the like scratch. Part of the beginning was kind of like really like I just finished listening to the original, and then I listened to YZ's joint, and I'm like really like it's the, it's it sounded like I, I thought I repeated the original. Do you know what I mean? Until okay. obviously drops. So to me, that was that was how I decided on this one. All right. Uh, for me, uh, it's definitely YZ. I actually thought No More Mr. Nice Guy was whack when I heard it. I, the first thing out of my head was, y'all really jacked YZ? Like, nigga, this sample been around forever. Like, damn, goddamn, nigga. Like, have you not been listening to the radio? So for me, it it's not even close. And again, that's probably a lot. Because again, the reason why I love doing this panel is because I've got two MCs, a retired MC, an uh, up-and-coming producer who doesn't want this NPC, and a hip-hop fan to the core. So we're all coming at it from different elements. So for me, being a producer, this is like, this is damn near suicide. This is like, nigga, you got the monkey pox, and you talk about coming to the barbecue on Labor Day. Like, nah, nigga. Don't, don't come nowhere around me with, with, the, with using the same sample. So I'm definitely going with the YZ joint. Rel, what about you? What are you rocking with? YZ or the game star? Go with, I'm gonna go with YZ um, for what a, a one reason is um, Norma's a nice guy. I I wasn't really feeling that song at at first. You know what I mean? Like it's it's cool, but I just remember like my older cousins was listening to YZ. So like I like heard that. You know what I'm saying before, and it was like you know they not so far apart that. The, the second one will outweigh the original. I mean, not the original, but the first one. It right. Did, you know right. So, like, Norma's a nice guy isn't dope enough to overtake it to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially with, like, me hearing YZ, because like you said, like, I used to hear them. I was really young, but my old, I was always with my older cousins. I used to hear them. I swore they was from Philly. I swore the Crown Rulers was from Philly. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? So, yeah. Um, like kick the ball was like my one of my favorite songs when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, like, I don't think you know that particular gang star song was dope enough to overtake the person that used that sample first. So I'm gonna go with YZ. All right, no doubt. Vague. What about you? I'm gonna go with uh, YZ. Um, I, I felt like you kill. I felt like that gang star joint was whack. Um, the the YZ joint really stuck with me the first time I saw the video. That was the first time I heard the song when I saw the video. And I think it just has a, even though again, we, you know, we're talking about the same sample, it just has a a, a cooler vibe to me um, in, in the way it's executed. And, um, and you know, obviously the, the rapper has a lot to do with that when you, when you hear YZ versus yep. Guru. Um, there's a big difference um, there, and most people know that first Gangstar album don't even exist to me. I do not like <laughs> that's juvenile hell to you, right? That's juvenile hell to me. Like, right. <laughs> so. all right, no doubt, Burn. What about you, bro? So, for so many reasons, YZ. Um, I, I I love that his, his first album. You know, Tower the Power. You know, oh, um, such so many great songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I I met him later on. Um, he did did some stuff with my homie. Um, and I'm on record as not being the biggest gangsta uh, fan anyway. And like Vague said, YZ's bounce was to me way the flow. Everything about it was way um, better than gangsta. So yeah, I'm gonna go with YZ on that. All right, Kel, my bro, my my Queens brethren, man. People were singing. I was from Queens this week. I said, "Nigga, I don't want to make a pitch." That's I said, "Nigga, how many the fuck? You hear how much I say, John and Bull? <laughs> like in a day, how would, you, how would your mind could anybody think I'm from Queens? That's no disrespect to Queens because I love Queens, but dog, I say John at least once every, in every tweet that I send out. So how could you ever think I'm from Queens? But neither here nor there, Kel. What's going on? Which one you did you rock with? Um. 
I'm a Robert Porter on this one. I, I like the game so too. Um, that's because you got that wild pitch shirt. <laughs> yeah. That's why. Yeah. That was going back I got a tough city <laughs> joint, too. Uh, I tell I everybody out there, Kel has the best collection of record label t-shirts in existence. Like, every time I see him, he's got a new one on and has never repeated a shirt. So, salute to you for that. But I'm sorry, what are you saying, bro? So you like the Gangstar? I like the Gangstar, too. I like, I like the, I'm like before, so I like Primo Scratch and, you know, that's, I'm, I'm a sucker for that. So, you know, just to, I know, I know Guru is not, at the, like you said, uh, re, um, Vegas with the, um, that, that first album was not great. Guru's not, at the level of MC that he is at, um, yeah, no uh, hard to earn or uh, moment of truth, but um, yeah, I still like I still like pretty much cutting on that. On that, on that All right, no doubt. And Kel, that's a great point you bring up, and I and I always say this about no one, Mr. Nice Guy. That I felt like that was almost like a demo. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that, that was almost yeah, like essentially that demo that they just got a deal on it. God forbid, if you took my first demo tape or my first beats, <laughs> bro, you know what I mean? They're not there. So, you know, uh, but again, shout to YZ if you've never heard of him. Son of the Father, this album, Five My Classic, incredibly dope album produced yeah. by the late Tony D, producer um, out of Jersey who passed away. I want to say he got hit by a car, but I'm not sure. But uh, RIP to Tony D, either which way, very dope album. Kel, we going out to Queens. Anytime I think about this song, I think about you. We talk about how it was the Queens anthem. We are going with the uh, Kenny Burke sample. I'm not going to say the name of it. What the fuck? Keep rising to the top. If yeah, you don't know who's going like, come on. Now. So, Kenny Burke, keep rising to the top. You had Pete Rock and CL Smooth take you there. You had OCs, Born to Live. These dropped literally at the same time. I want to say they both had the video was out at the same time. They were both like the second singles off of each of these five mic albums. Um, Porsche, which one did you rock with? The Pete, yeah, you know, this is a dumbass question. Do you want me yeah, to skip? It, 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 it really is. Like, why am I it really is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I picked Pete Rock. Pete Rock and Small Smooth for me. Yeah, um, why did I even ask? Like, that was my fault, Sean. That's my fault. I, I will say in my defense, it's not because I just favor Pete Rock um, over OC, but I just, Pete Rock did better things with it. Um, and <laughs> it just, I just felt like OC's just felt a little flat for me. Um, it, you know what I mean? Like it just fell flat. Um, Pete Rock and CL Smooth were just a more engaging, just they were more engaged. That track was just more engaging for me as a listener, you know? So that's why I, I chose Pete Rock and CL Smooth. All right, no doubt. When you're 92 and they got your great grandkids at the hospital, you're going to regret that you wasted your breath. <laughs> that I wasted that. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't wasted breath, right? The last breath that I have to talk to my great great grandkids, I just wasted <laughs> Max and Porsche. What was better? Buck Wild or Pete Rock? <laughs> um, <laughs> the joint, this joint right here was a learning opportunity for me. My OG, a kid called Roots, who was, um, who really helped me out with making beats and everything you know i'm up at the radio station and we're talking and i'm like man ain't no difference between them songs they use the same sample that nigga was like nigga kill get the fuck over here and he was like yo i want you to hear these pete rock drums i want you to pay attention to these drums now i want you to go back and listen to oc's born to live and again this is no knock on buck wild this is one of those times i tell people when there's a photo finish you it's a it's literally by a point second so sometimes when shit is that close you got to start nitpicking and pete's drums like when i zoomed in and i just wasn't hearing oh it's the same sample it's the same song when roots made me sit down and really key in on on pete's drums versus buckwild's drums man it was night night and day for me from there on out um and that was a great lesson to me as a producer to realize just because somebody used the same sample that you did already that the drums can add so much more to it. So, of course, I'm going with Pete and CL on this joint. Rel, what about you? Which one are you going with? Yeah, this, this one is interesting for me because <clears throat> I think Pete did better with the beat. Um, I think Pete did better with the beat. It, it got more, I guess it is the drums. It got more feeling beat. Like, it got more, I don't know. It's, I guess it's the drums. Like these uh, drums definitely brought a swing to the track. Yeah, that, yeah. That that's Buck the, Wilds didn't have. There was a swing to it. That's the word. That's the word. But I think I like Born to Live song better. 
Yeah, yeah. It, it's hard. It's not an easy <laughs> joint. It's not an easy joint because what OC was talking about was real, and then he was spitting too. You know. Yeah, and like I think I like going to live better than take you there, even though I like take you there. You know what I'm saying? Well, hold that for one second. For people watching, we're talking about which song was better, and these are good examples. And another one is, and I didn't even put it on here, and I should have, was when um, Alchemist did the beat for uh, "We Gonna Make It" for Styles and um, Kiss versus what Razzcast did with it. Same beat, but Styles and Kiss made it a great song. The Razzcast song, I can't even tell you one line from that joint. I could rap right along with, with, with Styles and Kiss when we gonna make it. So it's just an example, another example of how somebody can have the same exact beat. This is the same exact beat, not different drums or we use the same thing. It's the same beat and Styles and Kiss made it a better song. So the questions are, which was the better song? So. Well, I'm glad you're bringing that up that you like OC's verse maybe more than CL's, which is why you like the song better. But I'm sorry, finish up what you were saying. Like, I, I just felt like like OC was in a pop. I remember when I first saw that video, like, like even even his mannerisms in the video, he was like, he was in a pocket. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, he killed that song. You know what I mean? So I think the beat is better with Pete Rock, John, but I think OC, I think I like that song better. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's kind of like half and half for me. like Right. And that's another good point because I like the song better with Pete and CL just because I felt like it was a whole song. The chorus, the shorty singing, yeah. CL smooth rhymes. I mean, that nigga, not saying whatever. I, You know, I don't know what CL talking about half the time, but <laughs> that nigga voice over the Pete Rock beat with R&B sing, it, it, just, it just was a better song. But I definitely feel you. Vegas, who, what you got on this one? I got uh, Pete Rock and CL smooth, man. That's my favorite song off that album. Okay. The pretty album. So, um, I, 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 for me, again, it's like the YZ joint. That it's more of the feeling, um, and I think Pete Rock gave you more of a vibe that was a little bit more than just a hip hop beat. You know, not to take anything away from the OC joint, um, because I think his lyrics gave more of a vibe for his rap. Right. Um, but I was just really focusing on the production and what was done with the with the sample and the, you know the song, the beat, and um, yeah, man, I just like that the, what P Rock did with that shit. It just feels good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. All right, bro. What about you? Yeah, that's the reason I, I'm going Pete and CL over OC. It, it feels good, and then you you add the the singing element, all that stuff. I mean, from from what I gather, OC was you know hard hitting on some things and that ain't the feeling i get from that track so i'm gonna go with um pete rock and seal smooth all right cup i'm with rel I, I like the oc joint um I, I'm, I'm with you on the, as far as pete pete kills the beat rather than than but um i just like what oc spitting i just like the the, the the you know obviously the flow and stuff like that and the album is a five my classic i think that um yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah the oc is just that's my joke right there. All right, no doubt. And for this joint, too, I want people at home to realize that. And prayerfully, people will go out. They'll do their homework. You'll check out these songs. If, if you want me to email you this list out, just hit me up on Twitter. I'll definitely do it. Um, but this came out again, but I said earlier, at the same time. And um, me, my man Snips, and Dante Ross, who's probably one of the greatest A&Rs ever, were talking about it. And, and even Dante said that he felt like this was a mere coincidence. Because back in the 90s, all these dudes went digging together. You know, Buck, Wild, P, Large Pro, Primo, they all went digging together. So he, you know, he even said, like, I really think this was a coincidence. This wasn't no bite. It wasn't like somebody used it first. It was just like, and like Kelv said, this was a Queens anthem. Like, you know what I mean? And not just Queens, everybody played, you know, this joint, you know, in Philly or whatever. So it's not like it was some hard to find sample that nobody ever heard of. You know, it's only a matter of time before and for a lot of people watching this another that's why I said it's gonna be a dope ep because for people who want to know about producing and vinyl and different terminologies we use, this is the ep for you. Because a lot of the songs that ended up getting sampled were just songs that cats would play at the park. These were just park jams that people just eventually finally got record deals and said, yo, let's um the story of Rock the Bells. The original Rock the Bells was supposed to be Peter Piper. But LL and Run were like beefing at the time. 
So LL was going to use that because he said, yo, back in the day in Queens, the DJs would be just going back and forth with the Mardi Gras break and they would call that rocking the bells. So that's where the original Rock the Bells was supposed to be. It was supposed to be Peter Piper. So that's really all a lot of these DJs was doing. The Samande for Me and the Biz, uh, the Master Ace. Molly was talking about how his older brother would play that Samande joint in the park all the time. So a lot of these samples, especially coming in the mid to late 80s, were just records that DJs was playing in the parks all the time. So I um, wanted to put that out there. The next joint, uh, Esther Phillips, That's All Right With Me. This was sampled first by LL for Pink Cookies in the Plastic Bag, the remix. Uh, Sampled uh, second from Mob Deep, produced by Q-Tip for Give Up the Goods. Produced third for j Roo's Whatever, produced by Primo. And Easy Mo did the LL uh, remix. So we've got, this time we got three songs using the same sample and they're coming in that order. Um, the story of what I heard was that Havoc or somebody from that label kind of reached out to Moby on some old like, yo, what did you use? I kind of want to fuck with it. A tip reached out to Moby. So I want to almost say like it was um what I would call almost like a call to action, like a call was made. Like, is it cool if I fuck with that? And Moby was like, yeah, you know, do what you do. Now, again, this is just what I'm hearing. I don't know if it's 100 percent true. But to me, that means something as a producer that I reached out to the producer who used it first, like, yo, are we good? You know what I mean? If, if I fuck with it, and if that producer said yes, then then you fuck with it or whatever like that. So Porsche, which one out of these three did you like the, the most? I went with J. Roo, um, but it was, it was a tough call between that one and the Mob Deep joint. I didn't like the LL joint. Um, again, I felt like it just was, it fell flat. Like it, it wasn't an, an engaging song. I didn't feel like it was, I don't know. I just, I didn't really like the song as much as the other two. And then I just went with J. Rue because I just love his flow, his rapping. Um, and of course, whenever we can talk about J. Rue, I, I'd love to do that. So yeah. All right, no doubt. I'm going with the LL joint. Um, probably because I hated the original Pink Cookies. Like, it used the same blind alley beat that has been used over and over again. So, and then I saw the video to this first. So, also the video also sold it with, on me with LL out in Queens with the Beamer and then the Beamer get a flat and he got to get on the bus. Like, I, I the Pink Cookies in a plastic bag, man. That, that, that just brings back so many dope memories. So, I got to go with that, join on that. And then again, me being a producer, nine times out of 10, y'all gonna see as a producer, I'm gonna probably pick the first one that was made because especially if there are years in between somebody else using it, Primo at least did try to flip it. He didn't use it the same exact way. He didn't flip it enough so you didn't know what it was, but he didn't right. use it the same way for j joint. So this is an example of how Guru could have said, you know, it's how you hook it up because it's the same sample, but he used it different. I'm going with LL Rel, what you got? I already, why am I asking you? Cause you an LL fan. I, I can just skip. I'm sorry, bro. We'll just skip. We'll just save my bro. Hold on, hold on. I want to say one thing though. All right. Cause, you know, I, Cause I'm a mob fan too, but the video. The videos were sold. The video was dope. Yeah, the, video, <laughs> the video pushed that one over the edge for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll, and the video is a simple video, but it just bring back like, what the, the time that it was like, how stuff was at that time, you know what I mean? Like it was just, you know, and at that time, LL was my favorite rapper, period. You know what I'm saying? And that video, that video was just cool, man. That vi The video set it over the edge for me, so I'm gonna go with the LL zone. Yeah, and two, I think at this time, I saw the video first. Like this back when the video, you would see the video sometimes before you heard the 12. So it's not like I heard it on the radio and I was like, oh, that's cool. No, seeing that video and it, what I loved about the video is it was just an around the way video. It, was, it wasn't it was even like nothing like, oh, we gonna have you in the sewer, or we gonna have you here. Like, nah, nigga, you just picking up your man in your beam, a ride through Queens, car get a flat, you throw the keys to your man, like stay with the whip, I'm gonna get on this bus and bag this shorty. Like, so the video, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Uh, Vay, what about you? I love the LL joint for, for all the reasons y'all mentioned, but I gotta go with Mob D. It's something about the hop had mm. put to it. Tip. I mean, tip. That tip mm. put to it. That, I mean, that shit was rocking in the whip. It was in the club. I mean, DJs was bringing the intro back. Like, it was, it was yeah. just different. And it was to the point where I didn't 
initially recognize it as the same sample, right? Because okay. I love the LL joint. Um, so when when they used it, when Tip used it, I didn't recognize it as the same samples, uh, which to me speaks volume. Um, so yeah, I gotta go with Mom Deep on that one because it's it's just a hop on that beat that I'm like, damn, you could you could just rap to this shit, you could dance to this shit, you could do whatever. So yeah, Tip the snares that Tip used man, in that joint, is, <laughs> man, right? I, again, I, I could talk for years about Tip's drums and the snares he uses on that, and then the way he drops the sample on that last verse with P when it's just the drums, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, can't go wrong with that. Vern, what about you, good brother? So I really came to this conclusion today that Give Up the Goods is my favorite mob beat deep song. Wow. Um, okay, okay. I mean, bro, what Q-Tip did on that track, man, with the drums, the, like that snare goes <laughs> to, to your heart. You know, it's, it's just... It's a beautiful track, man. And, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just stop it right there. I'm gonna just say, yeah, Mob D, give up the good. All right, no doubt. Queens, what's going on, Calv? Hey, Queens get the money long time, no cash. I, mean, I don't even know. <laughs> this, sir, you know what? I'm gonna just stop asking certain people shit and just get right over you. The Queens that, niggas are gonna pick. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, how the fuck do I think you were gonna pick Brooklyn? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you could have went with LL, that's still cool. I could have went with LL, and, and yeah, I love LL's joint, and, and J-Rule's joint is so, so too, but nah. nah like I said, yeah. the opening line, I'm, 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 I'm off that alone, I'm, I'm picking that joint. Yeah. 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 So. Nah. Nah, no doubt. Here's the funny thing. Um, side note for a minute, we was, I, I swear at least once a year, somebody got to talk about beach rhymes and like, I'm still sitting here like, yo, could y'all imagine if beach rhymes yeah. and like, had give up the goods, had the beat for drink away the pain, Crooklyn had the Dodgers. beat for temperatures rising, for Crooklyn Dodgers, Dodgers. get down Craig Mack remix, like uh, Nas, uh, the Nas uh, One Love or the Nas, Nas One Love and Nas World is yours. And Nas World is yours. <laughs> Yo, we would Yo. not be talking. We'd be looking at beach rhymes and life. And I always tell niggas that I'm like, yo, just close your eyes and think about that for a second. Right, well, kill really quick, man. I'm uh-huh. glad you said that because when I hear one love, I can hear Fife killing that shit. Yeah, like yeah. Fife's yeah. voice and the way he rhymed, yeah. he would have killed that shit. Yo, yeah. the Crooklyn Dodger beat. If that was the if that was the single right. for fucking beat rhymes of life, like right. yo. Come on, yeah, man. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. So I always yeah. tell people that people forget before that tip wasn't giving out beats to other people. He was keeping all his shit mm-hmm. for Tribe. You know what I mean? So if he would have kept all them heaters for Tribe, hey. man, Burn just sat there and said his favorite My Deep song is a Q-Tip beat. Like, yeah, and, yeah. And so to that point, Kill, that's why Tip name got to come up when y'all talk about all-time favorite producers. Think about all the songs you love in the hip-hop. I guess, but, like you, you say, to get yeah, produced by Tribe. Yeah, it yeah. says produ- I guarantee you, if we, everything, we if everything would have said produced by Q-Tip from the beginning of Left mm-hmm. My Wild and Al Segundo, Tip's name would be different. But for so many years, we all thought Ali was doing the beats. You know right. what I mean? So that's the problem. You know what I mean? So that's the thing. So which is why Tip on his last Tribe album, it, everything says produced by Q-Tip. He, he was done with that, produced by Tribe, whatever, whatever. All right, the next joint we got up. The whole darn family has arrived. One of my favorite album covers too. Stays right down here, always in the cut. Right you, there. You, you made me go get it, kill. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. And here's an extra flex for y'all because a lot of folks don't have the alternate album cover, which is this joint right here. The whole darn family's in the house. Dust up in here. I need dust. Damn, we. <laughs> I don't know. One of, my, one of my digging excursions was the exact same thing. But here's the wild part. Nay was um Nay was like, yo, I see more white people in this joint than on this joint. Like, I'm like, yo, Naomi, you got the dopest eyes in the world because I ain't never looked at that. There's not one white person on this cover, but then on this cover, which is the main one, it's like four white people in this cover. So she's like, Daddy, did they do a five heartbeats on them dudes? And whatever, but pretty much yeah. yeah basically right? right but um so that's what we talking about the whole dog family has arrived a very popular break the first time i heard it was epmd it's my thing so we're looking at it's my thing and jay's ain't no nigga 
Of course, again, the producer in me gotta go with. Did I just get dust all over my shirt? Oh, um, but um, the producer in me gotta go with the. It's my thing. The EPMD. That thing starting off with the helicopter. What? This is something else that I realized, y'all. One reason why I think if you if you were around in the '80s like that, why these songs mean so much to you, you gotta remember there wasn't a lot of hip hop. There really wasn't a lot. This isn't 2022 where you can make an eight hour playlist of what just dropped on Friday, last Friday. Like, there weren't that yeah, many you can. that was around in 1987. So you would probably hear It's My Thing every day. You know what I'm saying? You would hear it all the time because it wasn't a lot of hip hop groups out at that time. If, if, if there were 50 hip hop groups out in 87, 88, that was a lot. Like, you know, where's this 50 hip hop groups right now from fucking Buffalo, <laughs> you know, alone. We, we ain't even we ain't even left the state of New York. We ain't even get to New York City yet, you know? So that's why um, it's my thing. I mean, the, the whole start with the helicopter and the doom, 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 out there. I mean, that. I love Jay's Ain't No Nigga, but there's nothing that's fucking weird. Uh, it's my thing. Porsche, what about you, babe? Yeah, I got EPMD as well. Um, I'm not a giant fan of that song by Jay at all. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, EPMD for me. Everything about it is better to me. The, the use of the sample, the rapping, the song in general, the overall, every everything about it is better than Jay's for me. So all EPMD. right, no doubt. Bro, what you got? I got EPMD, man. I, I remember just, that group just, blew my mind when they with, with the stuff they was putting out man and, and I will say this about the Jay-Z one this is another reason why I would pick EPMD I heard the story about them making that how mm. they struggled to get to, it loop to loop it they, they that Jazzo had to do it like I think Jazzo had to do it and just keep doing it and keep doing it you know what I'm saying like but like they struggled to catch it you know what I'm saying so the original person that used the sample got to get the nod for me. And then at this, you know, at this point, like EPMD, we talk about that run they had. Like this is, this is part of that. They, you know, what I'm saying they blew my mind when when they the stuff they was putting out. So I'm gonna go EPMD, hands down. One of the craziest one. stories about EPMD that I heard that Eric and Paris was like, we was just sampling the records we had in our house, <laughs> you know, which is why. You a customer of ZZ Top. Wasn't nobody sampling no fucking ZZ Top in 1987. Niggas didn't know who the fuck ZZ Top was. But it was like, bro, we just using the records our parents had in the house. And that's what we doing. That's why, and that's one of the things I loved about it. Because at that time, everybody sampling James. You know what I mean? And what made it different was, you know what I mean? ZZ Top, the whole darn family's arrived. Eric Clapton's, I shot the sheriff. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't the regular stuff everybody else was sampling at that time and to me that's one of the reasons why strictly business is probably one of my top 10 favorite hip hop albums ever vague what about you which one you got this was difficult um for me because i love that sample so much so it's probably one of those samples where if somebody else rhymed over it i would i really wouldn't be mad uh, because i like it so much but i'm gonna go with hope uh mainly because similar to with the mob deep situation I love the EPMD version. Um, maybe I feel like it's a little too long, um, but the J joint is it? It's a little faster, right? Yeah, yeah, it's much faster. Yeah, yeah. It's a little faster, um, and I think that's what I liked about it. I, I, I liked it because it was it still had that feeling of a beat you could spit over. But again, I was in the clubs around this time. That song was crazy, um, but I will say. Well, nah, I, I I stick with the with the J joint, but I will say to Terrell's point, I remember back when I first started rhyming, and I was like, oh shit, there's a little beat on the end. Let me try to loop that shit. <sighs> you want to talk about difficult? I ain't have no studio, nothing. I probably missed a couple loops and shit. I just switched up my rhyme pattern like I did the shit on purpose. So it is difficult um, to loop that joint. I mean, you know, obviously now there's more um, equipment to uh, possibly do that. But yeah, for me, it's the J joint. I, I just kind of like that joint a little bit better um, just because it's it's faster. And um, 
I just like what you know what they did with it overall. It was unexpected to me. All right, no doubt. Vern, what about you? Hands down, EPMD. That album is my 11th grade, one of my 11th grade soundtracks. In fact, me and my boys Rudy and Derek hanging out Saturday at the game. Man, that album, that song just bring back so many memories. And and funny to me, listening to Jazz, uh, Jazz O, you you think he was doing brain surgery or um, <laughs> split splitting an atom the way? Yeah, you know they couldn't do it, but I okay, cool, cool, man. But yeah, <laughs> like Jazz O was done. Forward, bro. Like, right. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I couldn't give them a nod because they struggled. Yeah. They struggled. I remember that story about that song. Like they struggled yeah. to catch it. And when oh, come said, on, Vern. You you know it. If a nigga ain't gonna do nothing else, he's gonna embellish the story. Like you got jumped by three niggas. Now you got jumped by twenty niggas. You know, and two of them had knives and five of them had. A nigga gonna embellish the story. You know. Right. So whenever now you come around away, yo nigga, I just got jumped. How many two niggas? Probably about three. Probably about three. Three, four. Three, four. We just, I'm going to take off six for every nigga you say you got jumped by. <laughs> so he had to make it seem like he just invented fucking Apple computers and MacBook Pros and <laughs> one shit. Right? He had to. Kel, what about you? Which one you going with, bro? EPMD. Um, like we talked about the EPMD show. I mean, that's, you know, everything they were dropping at that time was just... Hit you over the head, classic, you know. Mm. So you just hit that, you just hit that joint. Come on, and yeah, that's that's the joint. I love the J joint is, is dope too, but nah, it's, it's different. All right, no doubt, no doubt. The next joint we got up is a Lou Donaldson John um, main source. Used it first for just a friendly game of baseball off their debut five mic album, uh, Breaking Adams. Then Tribe used it as a B side for this song called If The Papes Come. Mm-hmm. And again, the producer and me, as soon as I heard it's the pa- If The Papes Come, I was like, yo, what the fuck, man? Why are you losing, <laughs> using bullshit? Like, I mean, immediately, it was like, yo, what the fuck, nigga? Like, you know what I mean? So again, Main Stores came out first. I'm going with just a friendly game of baseball because I love the story behind it. I don't think Large Pro gets enough credit on that album for his storytelling. Um, so just an incredible, and now, you know, making baseball like, you know, kids, black kids dealing with police brutality. And, you know, of course, we all love fuck the police. But, you know, just a friendly game of baseball is tackling that same subject matter and doing it in a deeper way to me. So, of course, I'm, I'm going with main source on that one. If the papes come was dope, you know what I mean? But again, and again, when it comes to large and that crew of people, again, like like um, I'd say Ross was saying, they all dug together. So. You know, I wouldn't put it past them to have grabbed the same album, but at the same token, too, we can't salute Tip all the time because according to Pete, he came down to the basement, heard Pete had the jazz beat playing on the SP-1200. Pete said the record was right there. Tip Pete did, went back, did jazz on Low End Theory, even shout out Pete at the end of the track, said Pete rocked for the beat. So... You know, I I, I I love Tip to death, but I'm just saying, my nigga, you know, why are you saying Pete Rock for the beat, you know, but then it say produced right. by Tribe Quest, you know what I mean? So right. I'm going to go with main source on that. P, what you got up? Um, I'm with you on that. Um, I got Large Pro, the main source joint. Um, and again, I, I just feel like, like less is more sometimes and i feel like the tribe joint is just a little bit busier sounding and again i'm not a producer i don't know the correct lingo but i feel like large pro did better with the sample as well and kind of just made it match the the track a little bit better it was just an overall better song to me um i know you said you really like if the papes come i didn't I don't know. No, I mean, it. I said it was cool. I said it was cool. Like, okay. it's not, I see why I didn't make the I didn't, album. I didn't it was, love it was that though. track as much as I love the, um, the Just a Friendly Game of Baseball. And I absolutely agree with you, Kill. I don't think, um, that album, I don't even think that album gets talked about as much as it should for what it is. Um, so right. I definitely am going with Large Pro here. All right, no doubt. Rel, what about you? Uh, main source. That, I, I love, that's like, I love that song, like, a lot. So it's like, I don't, it, it, this one not even really close for me. You know what I'm saying? Like the way I feel about that song and that the songs on that album, the storytelling on that, looking at the front door, like 
he was he was killing it. You know what I'm saying? And um, that song, I love that song, like because I remember looking at the title, and when you look at the title, you don't know what he about to talk about. You know what I'm saying? And what he talked about was important and still relevant right now. And that was made back in the early 90s. You know what I'm saying? So I love that song. So that's going to get the win for me. Hey, no doubt. Greg, what about you? Uh, I feel the same way. Main source. Um, I, th- I think Portia summed up my opinion because uh, I felt the same thing, right? The tribe joint is cool. Um, but the main source track is just better. It's, it's it's better tailored for the lyrics, the theme of that record. So it had more impact on me when I listened to it. Because I had to listen to them again. Like, obviously, I'm familiar with them. Uh, but it was almost like listening for the first time and, and listening for what Large Pro did with the sample. I just felt like this. he did more with it to, to, uh, to impact me, at least as a listener, so I gave main source the nod. All right, Vern? Extra P, hands down. Um, I'm a Tribe fan, they on my wall, but um, if the pace come, almost seem like a, like a throwaway track. It, you know, P told a story, he had he had a vision for it, and I, I don't get that with if, if the pace comes, so definitely main source. All right, Calv, you on the fence because it's two Queens niggas, so I don't know which way you go. I was like, yeah, Queens on Queens violence. I'm like, this is this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I'm with the main source though. On the, on this term. Uh, same thing, you know, baseball is my favorite sport. So, like, bro, so looking at the title of the song, I'm like, all right, I'm talking about baseball, and you know, he flips it completely. But I like the uh, the little singing. I, obviously, you can correct me, Kill. There's a little singer hook on the song that I, I just thought that was different. Just add a little mm-hmm. something to it. Um, but yeah, that that album again, like Porsche said, though, said that that's that that album is, is it doesn't get talked about enough. It doesn't. It really doesn't. All right, no doubt, no doubt. I'm gonna talk now about a joint where you can flip the same sample. So it's gonna sound crazy for people watching. It's gonna make sound crazy for people on the show. I'm going with MC Hammers. Um, God, I don't forgot the name of the song. What is the name of the song we talk? Super Free. Yeah, okay. Super free. Oh, super free. James, James, James. We're talking about MC Hammer just looping it. This is this doesn't even have to be about a wood song we like better. We could say this, but I really wanted to use this example, Rick James Super Freak, that of course MC Hammer used for you can't touch this, but then also just Blaze chopped the fuck out of it for Jay's Kingdom Come. I know Kingdom Come is probably most people Jay's favorite, least favorite album. Um there's a couple of songs on there I really fuck with, including this one, because of what Just Blaze did with that sample. So just off the, what Just Blaze did with that sample alone um, gets the nod for me. Uh, Porsche, what about you? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. Um, I, I feel like just looping, don't get me wrong, I don't mind loops. I'm not like one of those people who's like, nah, you know what, I'm not a fan of loops. I like loops. You know what, Porsche, can you pause there for one second? Cause this is a great, great place to talk about. But you know what, Porsche Finch, I don't wanna make you forget your point. No. I'll write down my no, point. I won't forget my point. Go ahead. All right. I was going to say that this is the perfect time to talk about when people say loops. As a producer, when I talk about a loop, it's more so like um, the, the pop belly joint I just said. That That's a loop. If you if you play Lou Donaldson's pop belly, you're going to hear a friendly game of baseball. You're going to hear the papes come. That's a loop. Then you have other people who will say, well, a loop is just using something popular. Both of them are loops. But this is just a more popular loop because you already know you know, you've already heard Rick James Super Freak before. You know what I mean? So when some people say, oh, I don't like you using loops, I always try to correct people. Well, not correct people, but just help them understand it. And Porsche, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people in general where I'm like, people be like, nah, I don't really fuck with it because it's just a loop. And I'm like, bro, I bet you if I ask you your five favorite hip hop songs ever, they're all loops. You know what I mean? They may just be loops of songs you didn't hear before, but nine times out of 10, they're all loops. If I press, if I put the needle on a record, Roots used to do a show called Milk Crates on 889, and I took it over after him where he would play the original sample. And basically what we're doing right now, he would play the original sample and then the person who used it. And 99% of the times, as soon as the record hits the needle, the needle hits the record, you already know who used it because it's a blatant loop. You know, only Dilla and Prem are the only two producers that I've had people over my house. And I'm like, hey, listen to this. And they're like, 
what? I don't hear it. And I'm like, oh, let me play it again. I still don't hear it. And I have to like manipulate it some for them to hear like, oh shit, that's where, oh, I didn't even hear that. So I was going to, so Porsche, I, I just wanted to say it because I know you were about to say something about it. you don't have a problem with, you know, loops. And um, I like that you clarified that, Kyo, because I was going to actually ask the question because sometimes I feel like, um, yes, obviously, you you know, you said like the majority of samples are looped, but for me, like what MC Hammer did with You Can't Touch This is a blatant loop. Like it's just the yeah. exact, like cut and copy paste, like that sample onto yours. And then you just start saying some things over top of that. What Just Blaze did, mind you, I don't actually like Kingdom Come as an album or a song to be honest, but what, what Just Blaze did with that wasn't the same. It, it was the same, you could hear elements, but it's not, just cut and copy of of the original do you know what i mean so when i say luke that's what i mean like at, at least something was done to it there was other things added there was um you know a, a snare a, a, i don't know a chime like something was added it wasn't just taking uh james's joint taking out his vocals like basically using the instrumental and then mc hammer go go speak over it you know what i mean i don't even want to call him a rapper but that's what I, that's what I mean. Right. And I get it. And this is this this the chop job versions of, of this show. Really, I mean, if you want to talk about what song you like, but that's cool. But again, it's kind of like almost like who how I just wanted to give an example of how you can chop up the sample because here's the thing, Porsche. My only beef with this is just when you use something popular that everybody knows. Because there are a lot of times in hip hop, Peter Piper, one of the greatest hip hop songs ever. They added nothing. That's right. just Jay scratching. Marty Bob James Mardi Gras back and forth. They didn't add no drums, no kicks, no snares, no hi hats. But it's one of the greatest hip hop songs ever. And I think for me at least the difference is because coming up, I just didn't know my Mardi Gras. I didn't hear Peter Piper and go, oh, that's Bob James Mardi Gras right, before. Right, exactly. Whereas with Super Freak, yeah, like whereas with Super Freak, you hear it and you're like, oh, this nigga just rhyming over Rick James. So yeah. to me, a lot of that is the difference of what a lot of times when I talk about, oh, it's just a loop. It's really just, oh, that's a popular loop that everybody knows versus that's yep. some that obscure loop that nobody ever heard of. When when Come Clean came out, I, niggas was talking about Primo was recording water droppings in the basement of his building, like Beat Street or some shit, you know? So, and then when you find out the original sample, it's from a jazz drummer. It's a it's from a jazz drummer's album. And it's just like, you, like brain explosion emoji, like, yo, how the fuck did you find this on that album? So... Again, that's it. Well, what did you think about the way just chopped up the sample? Was it dope? Was it okay or what? Yo, he he chopped the hell out of that sample because I ain't even recognize that that that's what it was. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not like the huge Just Blaze man. Like, he cool, but that was that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a that and the MC Hammer joint is like two totally different. <laughs> methods of producing a song you know what i mean like one right. was just let's just rap over this drum and the other one he he did he chopped he did he did his thing on that you know what i mean i don't even really care for the song like that but mm -hmm. knowing that that's what he used and listening to the beat i'm like damn like yeah he did his thing yeah there's a bounce on that that's just like that hey 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 and then the beat drop again and it's like oh this is crazy from what i heard it was on Just Blaze SoundCloud page and Quest heard it and was like, yo, this shit's crazy. I gotta get, you know, we gotta get Jay on this. And then that's how the stuff came together. So that was just the beat that was living on Just Blaze's SoundCloud page at the time. Hey, what about you? Well, there's a little, there's a little bit more to that story too. Um, well, obviously I picked the Just Blaze joint, the Kingdom Come. Yeah, and I mean, again, this wasn't the round of like, it's more so the question of, did you like how Just, like to me this is what google's talking about rap is an art you can't own no loop it's how you hook them up like just right. blaze hooked up this loop you know what i mean so yeah like to your point it's it's like it's like you can and you can't right because what hammer did wasn't uncommon and you just proved that right right so it wasn't uncommon to to loop something like that it's just that most hip hop fans didn't prefer him as a rapper. So therefore, yeah, him yeah, yeah. using Rick James was invalid yeah. to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but when you 
here were just blazed it with that shit. That's that's kind of what we that's our preference at this point. You know what I'm saying? Is to right. to make something that's already great. It was already a great beat when Rick James did it. It was it was a good get for MCM at his point in time. Mm-hmm. But just Blaze said this is how hip hop is gonna do it. And I remember when um I don't know if this came from the SoundCloud thing, but there was it was kind of before trending was a thing. It was trending because he played that sample out like in a video um, mm. before in the early days of the YouTube and online shit, and people were going crazy like, "Yo, this shit is crazy," and um, and then Jay <laughs> wound up rapping over it. You know what I'm saying? But I remember he used to, you know, he used to play a lot of beats and make beats and shit online and that was one of them and i just remember just like uh other heads just hitting me up like yo you heard what he did with this rick james shit and it was sick and it's tweaked for the for the uh jay-z album because when he originally played it you know how sometimes them original shits be extra dirty and you like man play that shit and then they kind of clean it up and you're like all right right Um, right but yeah Burn, what'd you think about just work on that that Rick James yeah. doing? Yeah, he, he he did he did some surgery on that. Um Kingdom Come is not my favorite album. It, he it does have some good songs on it. Um but yeah, that's hands down and, and as Vague said, I mean, I mean we weren't checking for Hammer like that, you know. <laughs> so right. <laughs> right. And Cal, what about you? Yeah, it definitely is just man. Um you know, I don't. I don't think of like you said. I don't think of just for chopping more Della, more Primo, more yeah, even Pete, even Q Tip. But um, yeah, that he flipped that. He flipped that a lot. So I, I like that one a lot. Right. And I don't like. That, ch- I don't like that at all. But. Right. Right. Another chop job we're gonna talk about is a Roy Air sample. Pete used it as an interlude on the main ingredient, and then Dilla got a yeah. fucking hold of it. Yeah, 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 and yeah. fucking went to fucking work. He did. And the thing that I love about both these chop jobs, I want to talk about because most producers, we do shit like this as like training. You know, it's like practice to us. Because what Dilla would do was Dilla would take a whole lot of samples that Pete and Prem and other producers had already used just to see if he could flip them in a different way. And Dilla was the type like, yo, Quest, don't let Pete hear this. I don't want him to think I'm biting his shit. Like, I don't want him to think I'm disrespecting or anything like that. And Quest was like, nah, fuck that. The niggas got to hear this. And then that's how Black Star ended up getting on getting on it for this joint called Little Brother. It's off the Hurricane soundtrack. So people watch and go just YouTube Little Brother by um, Black Star. You'll hear it. Find the Pete joint. You'll hear that. Um, and it was funny because the same thing with Just Blaze. This was probably just some practice shit to him. That's why I was on his SoundCloud page because it was just like, right. yo, I'm just, I'm just fucking around. Like I'm not really trying to shop this beat. Like it's just, I'm trying to do this just to practice, just to kind of stretch my mind and see what I could do with it. And somebody just ended up um, getting on it. So that's another joint that's out there. What did y'all think of what Dilla did to that joint? Porsche. I know this is against Pete, but what did you think? about no, what actually, Dilla did with the OG sample. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked that because um, I, I think Dilla did, again, like Pete just used it as it was, right? Like mm-hmm. it was just a straight mm-hmm. usage of that mm-hmm. of that sample. Um, what Dilla did with it, it's kind of like what um, what we were talking about before with, with Just, just Blaze and what Rel said, like it was, it was unrecognizable. And that's kind of mm-hmm. what you want. You want to be able to use elements of the sample and then to me, like, when when I when you put out this um, list, I was trying to listen back to be like, who really used the sample the best, right? In in certain circumstances, and in this particular one, I think Dilla was just like otherworldly with it. Of course, in true right. Dilla form. So yeah, of course. Question: Did this list help everybody? Was this good? Did this help with this show having all these joints? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. yeah. Yeah. All right, no doubt. Uh, Ralph, what about you? Did you did you fuck with what Dilla did to this? Dilla, yeah, man, like chopping, like yo, he go crazy, like he go crazy. Tell you, is Dilla and Prem? Is them two is like neck and neck on some yeah. shit? Prem will probably get it more than Dilla, but Dilla's right there, man. Yeah, he be doing some some wild stuff, man. Wild. Yeah, like some some alien type stuff, man. Like, how do you be even thinking of doing this? You know what I'm saying, like. 
So of course I'm I fuck with what he did on this joint and like like for example like what he did with uh the light. Oh yeah. The, the, the vocal Please don't please don't talk about the light because it's a love song. <laughs> we don't have another twenty minutes for Porsche to talk about falling in love. So we I'm let's sorry. skip over let's skip over the light for right now because people play a no. wedding yeah. for boys and men. <laughs> Bay, what, what did you do? Were you fucking with? <laughs> Coach is walking down the aisle to like the light mixed in with fucking you know on bended knee. Watch, watch how she, watch how the DJ freaks it. It's gonna be the end of the two. Uh, Bay, what do you think about what Dylan did to this joint? So you're saying he's telling me that. To get Porsche's phone number, you just gotta have a bunch of fucking cue cards and shit. And yeah, basically, <laughs> basically, yeah, outside the window. <laughs> you gotta just pull up the hood crib in a shitty car and a fucking, uh, fucking knitted sweater, um, and 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 yeah, with some braille cards. I have such. Have, you say kill five trash cans? Five trash. Right. Oh, now, I feel you, bro. I feel you. I feel you. Well, babe, what do you think of this joint? Uh, yeah, man, I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, messing around with you, um, prior to that, I would have picked PCL just because I like the joint. Mm-hmm. But then when I learned more about Dilla's technique, now I can hear the shit. And I'm like, this, this he is Mr. I'm going to deconstruct this shit and put it together whatever way I want I, to. I, whatever, whatever way my heart desires, I'm going right. to do it. Right, and at first, at first listen, you're like, man, is that shit on beat? Yeah, it isn't, but it is. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Which is, which is dope. So, you really can't beat him when it comes to that shit. Right, Brian. What about you? So, Kill, as uh, Vague said, I mean, you've been saying this for a long time, and I ain't gonna lie, this is really the first time that I heard it from Dilla. Um, like, yo, okay, I, I, I hear the technique clearly i mean because that's that song does some twists and turns and then it comes back a little bit to what you're familiar with then it goes somewhere <laughs> it's like um uh that like a, yeah at the uh at the uh not the, the thing is you sit in a chair and it go in a circle but it spins oh yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's like kind of what this shit. yeah Something yeah like that's kind of what that track did. I'm like, there it is. Oh, there, where it go? Where it go? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really got an appreciation for Dilla just from that track. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. Cal, what about you, bro? Yeah, the same thing. And to, to the cop, uh, piggyback of Vern, you know, Royas, Royas is dope in itself. You know, he's just dope. So sampling him is, is one thing. And then Dilla just flipping that, you know. I don't know, Kill, you might have put me on to This is like a joint I saw on YouTube with Dilla here, like, sampled, like, um, like, 10 records or something. No, 10 parts of a record or something. Like, he just kind of moved them all around, like, the same part. Like, have you seen that? That's like, what no, I haven't, I haven't seen it, bro, but I'm telling y'all, Dilla, I think where I'll say he's a fucking alien, man. And it's one of those things where, like, that's why producers, we love him so much, because it's like, our brains would not have ever thought to do the things that Dilla was doing. Like it yeah. just, it, it it doesn't work like that. I mean, even for Commons doing it, I always tell people, there's no way in the world any human being ever figures out that that's Rick James. Give it to me, baby. The intro bass line, him taking them bass notes oh, yeah. and replaying them himself. Nobody's ever gonna realize that if Quest didn't say it. And again, that was just Quest saying, "Yo, here, take take this Rick James record and do something." And that nigga made Commons doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like again, alien. I'm low. Um, next up, we got Jake the JBs, James Brown's band. We got two songs that use this sample at the same time. You got PE's Terminator X to the Edge of Planet and Ultra Magnetics Ease Back. This may shock people because everybody knows Ultra Magnetic is probably one of my top five hip hop favorite albums ever. But I gotta go with the Terminator X to the Edge of Panic because yo, when they played that. During the show, you want to see 20,000 people in a stadium lose their motherfucking minds? Mm-hmm. Put that on with the intro and everything with that Flash Gordon intro. Yeah, when that yeah. beat and the go, go with Flav doing that Flav dance, yeah. yo, you can, you yeah. can forget about it. You talk about 
This is how when people be like, yo, but do they got a shook ones? Nigga, do you have a Terminator X to the edge of fucking planet? Like, I mean, to the edge of panic. Yo, my nigga. Stadiums. Yeah, stadiums. stadiums would go lose their shit. I ain't talking about no home on the wall club. I ain't talking about SOBs. Stadiums would go crazy when that drops. So as much as I love East Bay, there's just no competition with this joint. I'm gonna come around the other way so people don't have to wait till the end. Kel, what do you think about this joint? Nah, that's that's my joint. And and the thing is, you know, P obviously they, they sample the same record on a couple joints now on uh freaking on um Rebels Out of Pause too. But, right. Um, yeah, that, that. Yeah, the Terminator extra, man. Like you said, Flash Gordon come on and, and uh, but this Terminator spin into a. Like I said, I'm a sucker for for cutting and scratching. So, you know, just yeah. give me that. P. Yeah, this that's the joint right there. And keep in mind, this is 87, 88. They both used them at the same time. But again, I don't think there's no bite. And again, is this just my opinion? Is just what I think? Because again, at the time, everybody was sampling James Brown. Everybody was sampling JB. So at that time in hip hop, that loud screeching horn, that's what anybody was looking for. So I don't think it's any biting. Just somebody, they both use them at the same time. Vern, what about you? I am a witness. I was at the Omni. PE was on tour. They came out to that. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, nigga, that's the answer. <laughs> the answer is nigga. <laughs> I mean, babe, what about you? Man? Yeah, man, P Terminator X, man. That that intro with the with the Flash Gordon in the setup, I must have played that back a hundred times before I let the song rock. Mm -hmm. It's it's just way too powerful. Like the execution is just it's, it's like it was built for a stadium. Like that's almost yeah, right. like it was built. It's almost like the bomb squad said, like, all right, y'all, we're going to be doing these tours. We need a stadium there. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like you said, it's built. When that comes and it's like, Terminator exit, go, go. It's like Bruh. niggas are losing Ooh. these shit. You know what Bruh. I mean? So, Bro, you taking me back, man. Every time y'all say this. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, again, I, I love Shook Ones, but, you know, I don't know how that became the hip-hop standard, of, but do they have Shook Ones, nigga? I got about five other songs. Do y'all got to welcome to the Terror Dome? Like, yeah, nigga, man. Hey, man yeah, right. Right. Bring the noise, man. Yeah, well, you got to welcome to the oh, Terror Dome. Yeah, show them. Oh, my God, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, bro, what about you? P.E., that shit, the energy in that shit is... That's some different. That's mosh pit level right there. Yeah, like, yeah, it is. That's crazy. That that's like and as great as uh, Ease Back is. That that sound like when you hear it, that shit like kind of almost synonymous with with PE. Like that's the first thing kind of your mind. You know what I mean? For me, when when I hear it, that, yeah, that shit is. That's just on another level, man. Like that's on some Pavlovian. Pav Pavlovian. <laughs> you 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 gonna do something when you hear that, man? Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be so crazy. Yeah, yeah. Porsche, what about you, sis? Kill, when you sent up the list and I saw this, I was so mad. I was like, <laughs> he's really gonna do this, and then he's gonna make me do one. And I literally sat there with these two playing side by side, one after another, for like right. two hours straight. And I <laughs> came to the conclusion that I don't know. I am okay. neck and neck. They are tied. Never ever put these two songs up against each other ever again. <laughs> ever. Every podcast out there, never again. But gun to my head, and only for purposes of just the fact that the entire panel chose Terminator X, I'm going to say Ultra Mag because <laughs> I love Critical Beatdown. That I love the beat. The, breaking the beat when when it drops exactly. like, i just i love everything yeah i mean he's back is in fuck incredible man it's just and i think I it's so mad at you i wish i've been listening to these two <laughs> songs for two days straight trying to decide and because i knew i would get shit for coming again with another tie and i was like here we go like kill does this to me and then i get blamed for having ties like thanks kill thank you no, no, here's again. the thing Porsche, or, i mean vague said a huge point if you was in the clubs, like a club will make you change your mind about a song. I've gone into a club hating a song and left the club loving that song. You know? <laughs> so again, I think being in the stadium, if you would have been at those those events, like I, I think it would have been a clear home run. Because again, this is cra crazy for me. Cause we all know I love 
critical beat down but being at those shows there's just nothing can match that energy as much as i love them just nothing can match with terminator x at the edge of panic you don't even need to be in a stadium to get the right. energy on that song. You just right. need speakers that have high volume capacity. Like, and then you feel like you're in a stadium on stage with them. You know what I mean? Like right. it's that dope of a song and that much energy just, you know, blares through. But I, yeah, I'll try for me this time. All it right, may no change. doubt. Ask again, it may change. So don't hold me. All right, now I'm gonna piss off Porsche again. Cause the next one I got the JBs again. This time, it's Molly's production of Kane's The Wrath of Kane against said G's production for Ultra Mag, Cool Keep, Cold Housing Things. These both came out at the same time. I want to say I heard Cool Keep's Cold Housing Things first. So I think Critical Beatdown had dropped. And then the 12-inch for Wrath of Kane. Wrath of Kane wasn't on any of his albums. Um, it was just a 12-inch. I think it was the B-side to, no, I'm thinking about him. Um, lean on me so it still wasn't on either of his albums it was only 12 inch though um again y'all know i love ultra mag but kane's the rapper kane was just crazy man the energy behind that the way it started off with the i mean cool key starts the same way but it's just something about kane just mentioning random people like i don't know what the fuck he's saying he's just mumbling something and then the beat you know what he's saying man no, I, that's oh. what I was gonna talk about, man. The nigga whispering this shit. Yeah, it's like he's just mumbling yeah, random shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's just mumbling random shit. I'm like, yo, who? Pablo? Like Pop X? Right, right, you know, right. Who are you talking about? But it's just the build up, and there's the wrath of Kane, and then was the word we remember, and then some, baby. Like so again, I love cool, keep cool housing things, but I gotta go wrath of Kane. Kel, what about you? It's funny you said that. I, heard, I remember him in the, uh, I think I saw it came performed at, at the Apollo live. And, uh, now that I want to say did make the second album. That's Once on, that's on, it's a Big Daddy thing. Yeah, Daddy, it, like, it, it, there's a live version on here of um, Raph and Kane. Yeah. I think that's the first time I remember hearing it. I, don't, I, don't, I think I heard a live version before I heard the studio version. But like you said, just the, the, the energy that came, obviously, from set it off. Um, um, this is rhyming, rhyming fast, you know, just, yeah, this came for me. Yeah, just FYI, very dope Kane album. I never hear anybody talk about it on the timeline. Never hear this ever. Oh, yeah, five in yeah, Five My Classic, great follow-up. I think it's only two Molly cuts on here because it's always the knock that after you left the Juice Crew and Molly didn't produce for you, you didn't make no more good albums. I think uh, Kane and G-Rap got a little something to say about that. So very dope album if you haven't heard it. Burn, what about you? Raffa Kane or Cool Pete Cool Housing thing? You on mute, bro. My bad. Definitely Wrath of Kane, but I want to issue a warning. If you go on iTunes and you type in Wrath of Kane, there's a song by some dude named King Kane. And I was listening to it. I'm like, man, what the hell? What is this? Who? King, 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 King Kane. King Kane. Yeah. And I'm like, man, what? And I'm like, oh, that ain't Big Daddy K. So <laughs> make sure you're paying attention. <laughs> but yeah, Raptor came for me. <laughs> uh, hey, what about you, man? I think this is a waste of breath because it's Brooklyn. So, well, first of all, man, before there was Biggie, I was looking for Kane. That's how much of a fan I was. I'd be in the hood like, Kane, oh, that's a fucking <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right? Yo, that rap for Kane, especially live at the Apollo, because you know, yeah. I wasn't there. Um, it's it's the energy, man. The energy of that record, when it when it starts, you know he's going to kill it, right? Because you heard it before. Like you said, Kill, he whispering shit. It's kind of like how Prodigy did with Quiet Storm, except you could hear what he was saying. Right. Um, it was the build up you know what I'm saying and um, he just killed that beat I think the his performance is what elevates the entire song including the beat even though like you said Cool Keith the, the beat the sample's there right. it's just it's a totally different vibe so yeah the build up is so important um, when when a producer's making a song because I want to say with the Cool Keith it just starts off with dun 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 because I'm sonically High right. bionically for you suckers that want to be. Whereas with Kane, it was just that. Dun, dun, dun. It was just that build up. You know what I mean? And then when it dropped, it was just like, yo, you know what I mean? And again, I felt like people 
we were making songs for the stadiums at that time because that's where you know we were making songs even for the latin quarters we were making songs for union square for people to lose their shit like i don't know if people necessarily make songs now to perform at clubs or perform and stuff like now i feel like we make songs it's like we take it to the strip club like you know what i mean right. and try it out at strip club like we weren't doing that in the 80s and the 90s it was like make a song and then take that shit in your mpv and go play that shit in the hood like that type thing so what are you gonna say back you i was gonna say um warming up kane is like that too yeah yep. it has warming that up kane has definitely has that, that show that beat is just playing and you just yeah. kind of like oh shit you, you know, know what it feels like it feels like in that fade to black when they were recording um encore and kanye was like you know this is where you be in the crowd like say oh but like if you listen right. to encore it has it has the stadium feel to it it feels like it's a right. live version of it. it's like say hova yes, they gonna right. be saying oh like right. like it like does. yeah they had that mindset to be like yo you're gonna be performing this song you know what right. i mean it's like right. this just ain't no album cut this is this is your performance piece of it um bro what you got bro yo i got kane um my cousin mark ran this song yo Yo, he ran. <laughs> Yo, man, he ran his drain the ground. He was a huge Kane fan. My, uh, one of my cousins that I hung out with, um, and yeah, he ran his joint the ground. So, uh, yeah, I, I probably heard this seventy million times. <laughs> um, so, I, I, yeah, even if I didn't, wouldn't have liked it, I was damn near forced to like it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's Kane. He was in his bag, so I'm gonna go with Kane. Man. All right, Pete. What about you, sis? Yeah, I got Kane too. Um, I just love the rapping. Like, echo, I echo what everybody else said. But I also, with the sample, noticed, and I like pick these these songs apart when you sent the list. So um, I like that they sped up the tempo um, on that sample for the Kane joint. So I think that just matched everything that was going on there. And like Rel said, Kane was definitely in his bag. So yeah, Kane. All right. Next up, we got this joint from one of my favorite singers, Minnie Ripperton, Inside mm-hmm. My Love. Mm-hmm. Who used it for lyrics to go? They used it first. Jay Dilla used it for his group. Before there was Slum Village, the name of their group was J88. So before there was Slum Village, it was J88. They used, He used it for their song called uh, Look of Love. And the crazy thing was is... Um, he used the Inside My Love, the Trina Bouchard version off the Love Jones soundtrack, not the OG Men and Ripperton joint. Um, again, I got to go with Tribes because Lyrics to Go is just a fucking perfect song. I love yeah. what Dilla did to it, though. Like, I love Dilla added that bounce to it. He added them bass tones to it, that Dilla, that had that Dilla swing to it. I love it. But I'm like, Porsche, if this was gun to hand, I had to pick one. Is definitely lyrics to go because when I first heard lyrics to go, I was like, "Yo, this song is dope." And then when I found out the sample is just her singing in that high pitch that she's hitting, and Tip used it, it was like fucking genius, just genius with that. So I'm definitely going with um, Tribe's lyrics to go with that. Kel, I'm sure it's gonna be Queen, so I'll just skip right over you. Burn, you love Tribe, so I'll just skip right over you. Vague, I don't know, I don't know what you vague because you're Brooklyn. So where are you going with this joint? I'm going with a tribe, man, because um, first of all, I love that record, Mini Record. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that that already get, get me in the club. But um, when I when I heard what he did with it, it was it was like he captured the essence of that record, but for hip hop, because it did sound you know not to go too far with it, but. I don't know, it just gave it this vibe, yeah, some, similar to something we said earlier. Um, I think it was the Mom Deep or whatever, but yeah, man, I, I just love what, what Tip did with that joint, man. Like you said, man, he took the high pitch part and and layered, layered that in there. And originally when I first heard it, I didn't even peep that, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's just a bunch of sounds and shit and you kind of hear the one thing that stands out. <laughs> And then I'm like, oh wow, he took that part, and I'm just like, repeat. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the shit was just that good. So yeah, man, try. So so, Kill, I gotta speak on it. So when me and my wife were dating, she used to run many repetitions to death. So that so inside my love is because she ain't really no hip hop head or whatever. But I could put lyrics to go. I'm like, this is that. Hey, Amen. <laughs> 
the Fender Rose. I'm a I'm I'm a Fender Rose junkie. After that, that high pitch when Tip goes that doom 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 doom. That song, man, that's one of the most beautiful songs that hip hop ever ever created, man. It is it's ethereal. Rail, you are you're an English teacher. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> he said this shit is imperial. It, ethereal, ethereal. It, it, it's 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 spiritual man that that that's a beautiful song man so yeah definitely all right bro what about you yo man lyrics ago like one of my favorite songs ever mm-hmm. like i'm not going to even hold you it's like one of my favorite songs ever and that the, the high pitched voice how he let that shit plays like almost through the whole like through the whole songs like a constant you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying and that song like you said yo i think that song is like perfect like I can't find not one thing wrong with that song. You know what I'm saying? What he did with that beat, like, mm. and how they flowed over that beat, him and fight, yo, man. that yeah. that shit is crazy. That that's like one of my, that's like almost not fair because how I feel about that song. You know what I'm saying? That's like one of my favorite songs ever. So, mm-hmm. yeah, P, that. what about you, sis? So just to be very clear, Lyrics to Go is a five mic song for sure. Like that's that's non not debatable. But for this, I'm going with Slum Village. And for me, the reason for that is because I just feel like the way that Tribe used that sample was predictable in true tribe form. And the way Slum Village used it, or it was used for Slum Village, it was different. For me um so that's why that's literally the only reason otherwise lyrics to go i mean as you guys said it, it's a perfect song so uh, but it is predictable in my opinion all right no doubt i know the first time i heard the look of love join i remember i was on my way to 889 and my man little mike um was playing it on the radio um and i was just like yo this shit's crazy like the way dilla freak this and the bass tones and everything so ain't nothing wrong with that because look of love is a crazy song Next up, we got the average white band. Mm. Rock Kim used it for microphone fame first. Then Special Ed used it for Think About It. This ain't even fucking close to me. <laughs> microphone fame is probably my favorite Eric B and Rock Kim song. When I heard those guitar licks for the first time, that dun 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 Yo, and then when the drums come in, yo, microphone fame is a perfect hip hop song. To me. It's utterly Rock Kim is in his bag. That beat is incredible. It that is my favorite Rock Kim song ever. So of course for me it's that. P, what you got for this one? Uh, microphone theme is special ed. I got Rock Kim, um, and I okay. absolutely I absolutely agree with you. Perfect song. Um, it's one of my favorite Rock Kim songs. I I love Know the Ledge, but um, microphone theme is brilliant. So yes, I'm going with that one. Yo, when he said after 12, I'm worse than a gremlin, feed me a hip hop and I'll start trembling. The first time I heard that, I was like, I give up again. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this nigga has made me give up almost damn near every song I've heard him on. But feed me hip hop after 12, I'm worse than a gremlin. Oh my God. You know what I mean? It's funny because one of my young boys, you know, that I love that they ask me these questions. He's like, come on, OG, feed me. You worse than a gremlin? I'm like, bro, you don't understand because you weren't alive. See, this right, is where right. people, when you weren't alive, sometimes you just need to shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah Gremlins right. was the that's shit, right. okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so Gremlins was the shit. So, and again, Gremlins being a little shorty, that nigga Stripe was a little scary motherfucker yeah. at the time. So, you know, when that nigga said, after 12, I'm worse than a Gremlin, feed me hip-hop and I start trembling, I get it. In 2022, that doesn't sound like a crazy line. Totally get it. Trust and believe when that shit was said, it was a crazy fucking lie. So again, yeah. if you weren't alive, sometimes you just gotta shut the fuck up. Well, yeah. what about you? Yeah, Rakim, man, he was he was otherworldly on this song, man. Like, and like this is like top three favorite Rakim song for me. Um, no, the ledge is my favorite, ironically, same as Porsche. Um, but yeah, he was crazy. And and the thing is, this sample. I love this sample so much. Like, it's almost, you almost gotta be like horrible to rap over this and like stink it up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this sample was so fire. Cause I like the special air joint, but this one wasn't close, man. Rakim all day, you know what I mean? He, 
he spazzed on this joint like he do on a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's funny. I wasn't a big fan of Follow Me. So I, I like the song. I thought it was a cool song, but I didn't love it. And coming off of um, Paid in Full, it was like, I was kind of like, oh, man. But then when I heard Microphone Fiend, I was like, now this is what the fuck I'm talking about. Vague, what about you? Microphone Fiend or Special Eds? Think about it. And you're muted, by the way. This is definitely not one of those times where I'm going with Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> Microphone Fiend is one of my favorite songs of all time. One of my top, like Ralph said, one of my top rock, uh, Eric B. and Ron Kim records for lyrics, for beat. Yo, that, like you, like Kill, you described it perfectly because it's like it's ingrained in my memory of like going to block parties and shit like that. And that build, right? That same mm -hmm. thing, that build, right? Them drums ain't even there yet. It's, just, it's just that sample and them, them, them sleigh bells that we used to right. use back in the <laughs> Right. So it's it's just it's just too crazy. It's not even competition. I, and again, I love the special ed version, but mm -hmm. it's sort of like when uh, the first, because I didn't know this, but I didn't give a shit. When someone told me, like, oh, you know, well, that record would belong to Dion Warwick or uh, Dolly Parton. And I'm like, well, it belongs to Luther now. So um, <laughs> I don't care who else sung whatever. That's Luther's record. So it's kind of right. like that for me. Right. And then the crazy part is at the end with the drums, when it's just the drums. And in the video, the little mm -hmm. kid is hitting the speaker with the, with the baseball bat. Tidbit for producers out there. Alchemist used those drums for dilated, dilated People's Joint Marathon off their Neighborhood Watch album, which to me, Marathon is a crazy, one of my favorite Alchemist beats ever. And that's where he got the drums from. Vern, what you got on this one? I'm gonna be the odd man out. I'm going with Special Ed, man. Um, I, right. I, I really love that album, first of all. Um, but yeah, I like think about it. And then it ain't on the list, but I, I'm gonna throw out a shout to my man, Ty Shaw, out of East Oakland. With uh, life is too short, they use that same sample too. All right, you going so with that one? You still going with Ed? Yeah, I'm still Over going with Ed. I'm still okay. going with Ed. Yeah, yeah. All right, no doubt. Kel, what about you? 18th letter, man. Rock. That, that's my favorite rock song too, as well. So I mean, mm. I'm with the rest of you on that. That everything, the, the the drums, like you said, the end. I love that. The, the video obviously is iconic. So you know, love yeah. it. All right, next up, I got a Don Convey song. And it was used first by Iconelli on I Love Her off his album Vagina Diner, produced by Large Pro. Another album that I think that doesn't get enough props, probably yeah. just because. The name, the name of the album, sort of. Well, I mean, but, but keep in mind, this is still 93, 94. Vagina Diner isn't, you know, I can see if it's called Pussy Galore, but Vagina Diner, you know, isn't as bad as Pussy Galore. Um, and that's a root song, and we all know everybody loves fucking Black Thought, so <laughs> Pussy Galore, I'm sure I can nearly can say Vagina Diner, but very dope album, produced by Lars Pro, 93, 94, incredible album. But uh, he used it first, then Pete and CL used it on the remix to Lots of Loving, and then Kanye used it on Common's South Side. Mm. For me, I'm going with lots of loving, mainly because of the drums. And again, what Vegas was saying, and sometimes in hip hop, this is what, uh, what producers like to do, and I've learned from people like Pete and following them for years, is that build up. Because it starts off with like the biz, then and then and then. And it's like Pete Rock, lots of loving, remix, CL Smooth on the remix tip, check it out. And then that beat comes in with the drums and CL just kills it. But I also, so I'm going with Pete and CL, but I love the way that Kanye chopped it up for Common Southside, because he didn't use it the same way that everybody else did. So that's a great example of, again, we're going back to Guru. This is, but it's how you hook them up. And I felt like, yay, hooked up that sample. Same sample, but hooked it up in a different way. Porsche, what about you with this? Again, forget it, Porsche. Well, <laughs> what about you? Um, what do you got? Do you got uh, Pete? Akinelli or Common? I got Southside. Uh, yeah, that shit was hard. I mean, it's hard, bro. That, that's a hard job. Great. First of all, that album's crazy, number one, but that shit was crazy. And Common Spaz, Common yeah. Spaz on that joint. When he was, what do you say? Uh, 
tower like the Eiffel, lean with it, rock with it, black like the disciple. Yo, he, yeah, 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 he he went crazy. I like what Kanye did with that joint, masterpiece of an album, and that's just one of the, one of the standout songs on that album. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that. All right, no doubt, Vague, What you got? I'm going with uh, Southside. That song is um, that that beat, that song, everything about it. I liked a little bit more. Um, obviously, I like the other records, but uh, when I first heard that, I was like, "Man, this is, Kanye is a beast!" Like, like he just has different, like you know, what I'm saying, like it's it's uh, it's kind of like how we find it out with Hit Boy. It's like, damn, does he have a like a style? Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> because you just hear all these different types of beats and shit, and it's sort of encouraging, um, you know, to hear. Um, and that album, man, people don't talk enough about that album. I love nah, that. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's a solid album. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's a solid album. Top Shot is dope. Yeah, I think one of the other reasons I went with Pete and CL, similar to the um, Pink Cookies. I did not, I'm one of the people who did not yeah. like the original Box of Love. Like, I, I skip over that song every time I play um, fucking Mechanist Soul, bro. I know, I know, I know y'all know me. I'll be the minority. Man. I just... You ain't alone. You're not alone. I just, I, I just, not yeah. despise, because that would sound like it's trash, but I just, I never liked that song. So when I heard this and it was the remix, I was like, oh, yeah, yep, I got you on that. So, uh, Vern, what you got up? The guy from Chicago, he, he, he went crazy on that, man. And I love how hard the guitars are. I mean, it's just, man, that song is, is aggressive as all get out. So, yeah, I'm going south yeah. side. I wish we had that comment back. People be like, I miss the old Jay. I miss the old comment. How about that? Um, you know, <laughs> what you got, bro? I'm not going to go with Queens in this, so I'm not going to go with Akinelli. Um, I like the Pete, Pete and CL joint. Right. I don't, I'm with you. I don't like the Lots of Love in the original. Um, I mean, it's all right. I don't, I don't hate it, but it's, it's all right. But uh, I like how Pete flipped this joint. The, the, uh, the, um, I'm going to hold you. I never heard the um, that common album. Oh yeah, you yeah, gotta listen to that joint. Wow, yeah. never heard that. Listen, but I, I I like what I like what Kanye did with that joint. Though. That that's the joint stuff. Yeah, yeah. But Again, for people watching, that's an example. If you want to say some shit like it's how you hook them up, then you gotta have, you gotta hook up the beat. So that's an example of how you hook up the beat. Three Dog Night, Diamond D's best kept secret, or MC Light's I Am the Light. Now MC Light used this first. But I ain't gonna hold you. Diamond's best kept secret. That it's a rap for me. But and I love like y'all know I love y'all number one female MC of all time. But Diamond's best kept secret, man. That that was just next level crazy shit to me. So I gotta go with um, Diamond for that. Porsche. I think I know where you're going, but I'm not sure with this one. So where you going? Yeah, I'm actually gonna go with Diamond D. Um, I okay. think he used the sample better. I think it actually like putting those two tracks up against each other, to me, um, Best Kept Secret is a better song. Um, but again, I love Light. She's on my top 10 of all time list. So let's not get it twisted. I love her. But in this particular situation, I gotta go with Diamond D. Let me say this real quick too. For people watching again, because people always ask me, Kill, stands, fans, stands, fans, what's the difference? A stand would have said light, even if she didn't believe the song was better, just because it's MC Light. A stand would have said Pete's interlude over Dilla just because see a stand can't ever not root or go against what their favorite has done. There, there's it's it's a unity that I, I wish more husband and wives had in this world, but for some reason, stands only have for their favorite rapper. But that's an example of how you're not a stand because it's like a stand would have had to say, oh, like, you know what I mean? So just the example for people always ask me the difference between fans and stands. That's just one of the many reasons why. Bro, what you got on this one? Uh, I got Diamond D, man. Uh, yeah, that was, that, <laughs> that was a, uh, I remember that song, man. I remember really liking that song. Um, that was, like around the highlight of his of his career, you know what I'm saying? Um that was on Stunts Blunts. That was on that album, wasn't it? Yep, that yeah. Was the yeah. First, that was the first yeah, song for yeah. Stunts Blunts and Hip Hop. Yeah, like, yeah. Right? That album, that album's fire. You know what I'm saying? And he was he was one of the dudes I like producer, rapper dudes I thought 
at the, at the time of getting slept on, like he was he was nice with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, he don't really get mentioned in that in that light, but he, he right. was fine. So, and I I mean that song is better than the light song to me, even though right. you know I like MC Light, but I think that song is better. Happy birthday, <laughs> niece! <laughs> happy birthday! <laughs> you can't hear you say. say happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome, babe. Um, babe, what's up uh, with you on this joint? It's another case where I'm not going with Brooklyn. Um, that Diamond D record, like everybody said, it's just it's just better. Like it's just all around better. Um, as far as the vibe, the, had Anthony the, Mason the in the video. I remember the video. And it's just it's just a way better song to me uh, and and you know usage of the sample so and you know one thing that was a theme for me personally going through this list What's that? was a lot of the the samples were this person used it in the 80s and this person used it in the 90s mm -hmm. so i'm kind of influenced in two different ways because the terminator x thing that stuck with me way more because i was way younger and it, this was like me really loving something in hip hop, but then like with the ain't no nigga, I was way younger with um, with EPMD. Um, which, yeah, with EPMD, and I loved it, but I was outside. Right when, when Jay came out. Right. So yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. you know what I'm saying. It's, it's basically that. Yeah. All right, Ron. What about you? Full disclosure, I'm going light because I really wasn't that familiar with the Diamond D. So that's okay. All, all. All right, and Kel, what about you? Yeah, you know, we got Morgan at this time, so Diamond D was was the joint. That was that was hidden, man. That, that's that's the joint. And like you said, Anthony made it in the video. I mean, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, y'all. Now here's a song that I want to talk about because it's a very strange pick for me. It's by the Ponderosa Twins, and it's called Bow. Now. Sauce Walker, who I don't know who this person is. I have no idea who Sauce Walker is. I just know it said produced by Derringer. And I pressed play and I saw the video and I was like, yo, I fuck with this. The energy that's behind this. And then Diamond on his new album that just came out, Knotts, who most people know is a, I, I'm a huge Knotts fan. He's a fucking alien too. To me, he is right behind if somebody say kill who's your alien after dilla died it's not i have no idea how Knox does whatever the fuck Knox does I, his baselines alone i wouldn't even fucking know where to start Knox is amazing amazing fuck. now here's the weird thing about Knox. for some reason i like his beats better than the people who get on his who get on them and make them songs if that makes sense like I when Knox is just playing beats i'm like yo this shit sounds crazy can't wait to hear somebody rap over it. Then somebody raps over it. And I'm like, eh, it's cool. And I'm like, yo, I don't know too many people. Like, I will just take the Nods beat tape. Like, fuck it. I don't want to hear anybody rap over it. Because for some reason, they don't turn out to be great songs. Some of them do. Like, the shit he does with Busta, like Nods okay. and Busta, are like that, that look over your shoulders off Blue. the Busta Blue. last album. Blue and Nods are amazing together. Okay, Blue and Nods, okay. But like... Yeah, certain people, I'm never excited to hear what it is, but neither here nor there. But I, I got to go with the Sauce Walker joint. And it's strange to me because Knotts adds drums to it. He adds a bass line to it. And Sauce Walker, Derringer, being Derringer, literally just looped this. But I think it's the energy that Sauce Walker brings to the song. It's the video. He like out in the street in Compton. He got one of them old school boxing mics that he's talking into. And... So I gotta go with Sauce Walker, and that's strange to me because very seldomly am I ever gonna pick a loop with nothing added to it over a beat with drums, a bass line, and produced by Nods. But it just, it's a testament to me that Sauce Walker, the MC, just brought much more energy. When Diamond rhymes now, I almost feel like Diamond is like half sleep when he's recording his rhymes. Like he's so laid back. Oh, and man. It's like, like, nigga, are you awake? Vague, what were you gonna say? I was going to say that people need to pay attention because some people, are, I've, I've mentioned this before to a couple of different people, that Kill doesn't just like under the underground shit. Like, remember we did that one show, you pulled out that 
album, R&B album with that sexy nigga on the cover and shit. Like, Myron, yeah. Myron. <laughs> I, I personally don't think Vern will ever, I'm sure at my funeral, this nigga will have some way have found a fucking Myron CD at a pawn shop and somehow slipped that shit in my suit jacket in my casket. I no. did already, Burn will no, never kill. let me live that day. what we gonna do is we're gonna have everybody at your funeral laying on the pews like Myron was laying on the bed. <laughs> 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 Yo, what you say, man? But no, it's it's a testament to your ear, right? It's it's not biased towards one sound. You know, you're you're a music fan. And yeah. as much as you may be tied to a lot of classic shit that had Diamond D with it. Cause that was your era. You're looking at this new cat, and Darren is new, right? And you're just looking like, yo, this is just hitting me more, you know. The yo, that Sauce is- Walker joint is fucking crazy. It right. is. Yeah, yeah. That joint is crazy. Point. So, Bang, you going with Sauce Walker? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he said all that to say, nah, nigga. I'm going with Diamond, nigga. I'm going with Diamond D. <laughs> but I'm glad you put me on because I I didn't hear that Sauce Walker shit. So yeah, I didn't know who he was. I just saw something randomly produced by Derringer. I was like, Derringer? Not not with no fucking, you know, alumni or somehow associated with Griselda. Right. Let me check this out. And I was like, God damn, I don't know who he is, but this nigga nice. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, I of course. To, oh, I sorry. What you saying, first. baby? Yeah, mm-hmm. I listened to that joint first and I was digging it. Um, but I just like the production a little bit more. On, on Diamond's joint for, um, I, I think Portia said it, or somebody said it, that there was just more to it, as far as like mm-hmm. what, or maybe you said it, more that Diamond did with the beat. Yeah, it was much more um, than Knox. Knox did it, so it, that's what yeah, shot right, right, that Because normally, I'm always gonna like the song that's produced with drums and bass lines and everything. Right, right. Somebody looping something who didn't add anything, like Portia was saying, it's just a loop, there's nothing added, but, the energy that that nigga Sauce Walker brings to the song just kind of puts it over the top for me. Right, and, and one quick thing um, before you move on, uh, and maybe this is a show, but how do y'all feel about that? Because that's always bugged me out to have a producer. Yeah, sure, I know you rap, but you have another producer producing your record on your album. Like, I, to me, you say Diamond D got a new album. I'm pulling up for Diamond D. Because right. of the beats. Right. Maybe maybe DITC got some stuff in there, but I'm not thinking, you know. Every it's time always it's, every time it's like that too. Yeah. yeah it's, it's always it's always weird. It's always weird to me when people do that. I'm right. just wondering now if sometimes some of these producers are kind of like being honest with themselves, like maybe I don't have it like I used to. You know what I mean? So let me get some new blood around me or you know, let me do something else. So in some ways I feel it, but it's kind of like what you said earlier, like in the nineties, I would have definitely felt some kind of way about that. Like right. Diamond D, I'm not produced by Diamond, you know, what the fuck. But now in 2022, and I've heard, and, and, and the album I was really hyped for was the Diamond to Live Quali album that they did together. And to be honest oh, with you, right. I wasn't feeling none of the beats on that. Me neither. None. Either. none. Me. So part of me is like, well, maybe Diamond kind of got the memo, like, not, not, not say I don't got it no more, but like I said, I was super excited. Like, yo, this could be really, really dope. Because I'm one of the few people who really like to live over the right production. You know what right. I mean? So I was like, oh, Diamond D. But sometimes I get stuck. Like, nigga, this is not like, hell, your New York Knicks are not the 94 New York Knicks. <laughs> like, they just are. At all. You know what I mean? At in, all. In, in 90, 2022 Diamond D is not motherfucking 1991 Diamond D. Like, no. you just is it no diss no disrespect but he just is but porsche what about you with this joint which one did you like more diamond d um i like that joint more i i thought the sauce waka joint was a little bit i know you like the energy but for me it was just a little bit too much like it was just too much for what the beat was um i just felt it was a little out of place and i think diamond d um did better with with the with the beat overall um i felt like it was a better song and then of course like just in in general i love the way the beat was so yeah all right no doubt Rob. what about you yo so i want to thank you for even putting me on to both of those songs because i i hadn't heard them yeah. um both of them was fire um um 
this is close for me. Um, I like, like I, I feel like Sauce Walker was spitting. Like I don't even know who Ball is. Like, but he he <laughs> he went off on that joint, man. He it was nice. And then I like the Diamond John. Like I don't I don't know, man. I'm gonna go with Sauce Walker. Um, I'm, I'm gonna pick that one by a narrow margin because I like both songs. Like I was, you know. Um, I don't want to no disrespect to Diamond, but I was pleasantly surprised when I heard that song. Like it, it was, it was fire. You know what I'm saying? At this stage in his career, so I like both of them. So I appreciate you put me onto that. But the Sauce Walker joint like surprised me. Like I'm like, who is this boy? And then the yeah, video, yeah. the visuals was the visuals was fire. You know what I'm saying? Added to it. So I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with him. I, I'm Crazy convinced thing. we didn't listen to the same song. I'm convinced. <laughs> I just did not understand. Yo, what let me explain doing. something to you, Porsche. Sauce, that Sauce Walker joint, when I was talking earlier about Scratch Magazine, when they say, what's a beat you? I wish I would have found that sample first. I wish I would have had, because dude to me just, it's everything about that video. That shit made my newest mixtape. And again, I don't even know who the fuck Sauce Walker is. Wait, I don't know if he's a the same video. There was a microphone hanging out of the clouds, and and that's what I loved about it. I love that it hanging out of the clouds I, of the sky. I loved it. Where I loved it. I loved it. It was like one of them because old boxing microphones, and he's on it like this. Okay, what's and the he, uh, group, the uh, Primo group, um, that got all the, city, pitch black, pitch black. Yeah, they did that's the same thing. Yeah, same, same video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit was it. When I saw that Sauce Walker, I was like, I wish I produced this. That's how much I like that song. And it was one of those moments as me. I wish I made this beat for this nigga right here. This nigga is dope as fuck. And a at least over this type of beat. Now, for all I know, he's a down south nigga. Maybe he does drill. Maybe he does trap. I don't know. But that song, hands down to me. Like, it ain't even close. I love Diamond. But again, Diamond is... And he ain't Boldy James, but this laid back old man flow is 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 too dozy for me. I I, I need some hype shit. Bro, what about you? Which one? So to me, he that dude was hungry, like he was rapping because right for his life. For his life, man. <laughs> um I ain't how can I say this respectfully? Sauce, why I just leave it. Yeah, sauce. Yeah, just leave it. That's all. Just leave it. So I think I've done enough disrespect to Diamond D without saying no disrespect. Um, but again, here's the thing, y'all. Before y'all say I'm slandering Diamond, here's the thing. Slandering means I'm putting lies against him. I don't think Diamond D's beats in 2022 are as good as they were in 1991. There was a time when Diamond was the top five producer, in my opinion. I don't think that's still the case. It's just my opinion. No slander. No need to tag Diamond and. Bring him into the conversation because I know you you Twitter snitches like doing that shit. But that's all I'm saying. Kel, what about you, bro? I saw that I um, saw us walk up trending on IG like about two months ago. Mm. So I had seen that before. So yeah, I know I, I'm with you. I, I love that better than the uh, the Diamond Joint, the Diamond album. Like you said, I'm not I'm not too hyped. But I like the Boss and this Joint, but um, they got lost. But this song, right. I'm, not, I'm not feeling too tough. All right, next up, Galt McDermott. Special Ed, Ready to Attack, was the first to use this off his second album, Legal. Then Pete Rock used the same sample for Run DMC's Down with the King. Yeah. I'm going with Special Ed's Ready to Attack because I remember when I first heard this and I was like, this beat is crazy, the sample is crazy, Ed is killing this. I'm going to just keep it a buck. I really didn't like Down with the King. I like CL's part and I like Pete's part. I wasn't a big fan of Run and them with bald heads. I, I, I got it. I knew what they were trying to do. They were trying to stay relevant. I get it, but it just didn't. It didn't fit with my psyche. I was there in 1984. It just didn't feel right. It felt forced. Um, so I was never a Down King fan. So I got to go with Diamond. D I mean, I'm sorry. I'm still talking about Diamond D. I got to go with Special Ed with that joint. Porsche, who you going with? I already know who you going with. I apologize. Right. And I'm right. glad you know. Thank you. Right. I, we could just get right over you. Rel, who are you going with on this joint? Yo, man. I'm a sucker for the legends trying to stay relevant. And <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I'm a sucker for it. Whatever these old niggas caught, come I, out I, with one more try. Yeah, I love it. Man, I got to, you know, I went, I'm going with Down with the King. And, right. you know, do you remember when they made Pauls? Yeah, I when they made yeah, balls, bro, yeah. 
I yeah. remember Jam Master J with the dreads. Yeah. I used to want yeah. dreads like that. I used to yeah. want the dreads. Oh, yeah, like yeah, the, uh, the braid, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I like the song. I, was, I liked it. I, I, I did like Pauls. I actually <laughs> like Pauls. Yeah. Um, but that was the king. It just, because one again, the producer me, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, that's the shit Special Ed used three years ago. So, right. again, for me, that's always the, the bad part with producer ears. It's like, as soon as I hear you use the sample, it's like, nigga, like, I feel you. I feel you. Nah, yeah, I feel you. But yeah, I went with. I'm gonna go with uh, down with the king. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, yo, this is good. They, they, they still, you know, and this is kind of fire. I liked it, so I'm gonna go with down with the king. All right, Vague, What about you? I'm going with uh, Run DMC. Um, All right. The beat is the best part about that song. Mm-hmm. And Hill, <laughs> at least you weren't like me. I actually bought the album. <laughs> I was like, I got the album. you know, you know, I, I got the like, album. I was like, all right, all right, and I was like, oh, this shit is garbage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I thought it would be better, but no. Um, but yeah, I just love that beat. Yeah, and I think that beat made the record for me. Like, I didn't really like the video because, like you said, kill. It was like, wow, y'all gonna blatantly look like Onyx now? Like that. I felt like between them and the youngsters, it was like, God damn, it's oh, who right. got a bald head right now? Like, you literally, the last time I saw the youngsters, these niggas were like eight years old with fucking dark fades, and then the next time I see them, they like in fucking Carhartt suits with bald heads, and now they right. from Jersey. I'm like, God damn. And then the next time I see them again, they got dark fades again talking about hip hop ride. I'm like, y'all are like the hip hop chameleons. Y'all niggas will right. follow. With- Friend is out to the T, man. Um, uh, Vern, what about you? Run or a uh, special ed? Okay, I see you. This nigga <laughs> pulled out the hat. I, I see you, Playboy. Vern be having props on tap. Like, he like, who? Oh, here's the hat. <laughs> that, that, that was a defibrillator for Run DMC. For one yeah. song. <laughs> for, one, for one song. <laughs> All right, Kelv, I already know you're going with Queens, so that, that's a no-brainer. Here's a, here's a good one, y'all. Um, and this is going to talk about R&B for a second. You got William Bell's I Forgot to Be Your Lover. It was used by Dilated Peoples, produced by Alchemist First. And then Jaheim used it for this joint called Put That Woman First uh, that KG from Noe by Nature produced. Um, the reason I want to talk about this one, because it's not really which one is better because they're in two different genres, but it's what Vague touched on earlier. I think Porsche had asked, you know, is it different like when Ashanti uses the same sample? Um, for me personally, and I guess because it's r and I'm not as pissed when somebody uses the same sample, which to me is different than Puff using the whole song. So the example I'll give is SWV Someone. All he did was have them sing over the 10 Crack Commandments. He didn't use the same sample. He just took Primo's whole beat from the Ruta to the Tuta and had them sing over it, which is different to me than taking the same sample and using it like that for R&B. So I don't really have a problem if R&B producers or R&B artists use the same sample, but not the same song, if that makes sense. Um, Porsche, what about you? Do you have a problem with, and I want to say that there was some beef over this. Like, I don't know if it was Alchemist and KG, I can't remember, but there was some little tension behind this this joint right here. So would you have, do you have a problem if an R&B artist uses the same sample as a hip hop person? I, I do, depending on the hip hop artist and the sample. So I was pissed when I heard Ashanti use One More Chance remix. Why? Because that's my favorite big song or second favorite big song ever. Um, and I absolutely love that beat. Now, Ashanti, I, like, obviously it's more mainstream. It gets more radio play at the time. Then people start to identify that with her not knowing that it's bigs do you know what i mean so for me i just right. get kind of annoyed um i don't i don't like and i think um i mad at you tupac's was used as well um and i can't remember who used it right now but that was used i was pissed about that too because i'm like well i mean no. that, i want to say wasn't then big use that same the bar sample for the original god it was the original something my brain i yeah. can't think right now would you say back what one more chance for you? No, no, no. The um, I ain't mad at you. That um, the, the barge, a dream, a dream. 
Did, did Big use that? I'm I'm bugging. I thought Mary somebody Kate used it. Okay, I, I can't remember offhand, but Mary. Um, so Porsche, you. So with this so specific it depends one, on the, depends on the hip hop artist and depends on the song. Like I just okay. it, that's it. Just depends on me. I can't blanket right. statement that. All right, no doubt. Well, what about you? Do you have an issue with R and B artists using the same sample, not jacking the whole song, but just the same sample? Um, it here's a, here's another great example. Queen bitch. I want to say Nasheen Myra produced that for Little Kim. And then Mary used the same sample on I Can Love You Better. And then Kim is on there with her. But it's the same sample, but it's not the same drums. It's not the same song. Like Puff would just literally just load up the beat that Big used and then, you know, have SWV sing over it. You know, they Mary, whoever produced that joint for Mary didn't do that. They just used the same sample. And to me, it goes back to the radio grab. It's the familiar, familiarity of it. Because I was watching the Murder, Inc. Thing, and Irv was talking about that. And he said, hey, it's it. he was like, yo, this is DJ Irv. Because niggas going to be playing one more chance at the club. And now you could just blend right on into Ashanti. So basically, he's like, I'm just going to catch the, tr- the, the tailwinds from the DJ playing One More Chance and the DJ is going to have to play Foolish by Ashanti because it blends directly right in. So again, it's a money grab, you know, and for him, he's like, yo, it's my DJ days. It's my Brian G blend tape days or whatever like that. So, Ralph, what, what do you think? Um, I, I just, if it's dope, I mean, it just depends on if it's dope and some songs just seem sacrilegious to do that to. Uh, like, some songs are just so classic, like, it kind of messed up to do that, too. But if it's dope, because I, I, I remember, like, uh, you, y'all you remember Mona Lisa? Y'all remember the singer yeah. Mona Lisa? Yeah, that song. Hers was over with... Um, oh, Paris One. Exactly yeah. MC, I, yeah, I like that drum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, I liked her song over that. You know what I mean? So I guess it just depends on if it's dope. You know what I'm saying? If it's right. dope... Then, then we can rock with it. If it's lazy and forced, and you know what I'm saying, you're gonna hear it in the song, and then that's when it's whack to me. Like to me, I didn't have a problem with this joint, and I love dilated. Uh, worst come to worst, Babu is scratching the fuck out of that joint. But then I also love Jaheem's joint. The video was dope too. Shorty from Bronx Tale, Terrell Hicks, I think is the name, was in the video. Like I love both songs equally. I wasn't mad or nothing. Big. What about you? That name. Put some respect on Terrell Hicks. <laughs> Put some respect yeah, on that name. <laughs> Vag, what about you? Yeah, I liked um I like both. I like the, the whole idea of um that sample being used for like a hardcore hip hop record, but it also sounds really good as an R and B record. Um one thing about for example with what Irv Gotti did with Ashanti, and even what you're talking about with Puff, um, that was a mixtape thing that they mm-hmm. started to just make records out of them. Remember, like you know, yeah. remember the the one blend with the Stephanie Mills over, yeah, over whatever. Speech the president, right? Forever, or something right? in the way you make me feel, right? And, and I I just think at that time they started to make those records, and they weren't right. mixtape joints. Um, Because 50 Cent was doing that. He's doing the same thing. That's how he kind of got his run going. So I'm not I'm not too mad at it because I'm like, well, like, does it sound good? The Shanti thing I didn't really like. Obviously, Biggie is my favorite rapper of all time. So I just felt like he was just here not that long ago. Like it was too soon. Right. You know what I mean? For, For that big of a record. Be different if they took another record off of his joint that was like you know b-side or a deep cut and did something like that but yeah i mean that mary j blige whole career was built off yeah. of that shit so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i'm not i'm not mad at it because i'm a big mary fan so yeah no doubt no doubt bro what about you um i'm gonna give you a perfect example like real said if it's dope intros let me be the one and then oh, love yeah. Se- love sexy by heavy d yeah. same simple both of them killers. So yeah, if, if, it's, if it's executed right, I don't have a problem with it. That's um, a good I guess the two songs that you, I mean, I wasn't big a fan of Jaheem like that, but I guess I would I would choose him out of those two. 
right. And Kel, what about you? Yeah, I'm with you. I'm like everybody else said. I like uh, obviously Mary. Love the. I think of uh, I'm going down remix with uh, the what. You know, yeah, the what. Yeah, love that joint. But then Gina Thompson, what was it? Um, uh, oh, that remix joint. Uh, the yeah. first time we heard Missy. Um, yeah. God, things you do. I don't know. I know yeah. what you're talking about. I know what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I can I can see both ways and stuff like that. So you know, I, I'm, I'm cool with it. like everybody. So if it's if it sounds good, then I'm cool with it. All right, I got two more, y'all. I appreciate y'all hanging with me. We got Libby Sif, if that's how you pronounce his name, it's called "I Got the," and it, three different songs are sampling this one song, and they use three different parts of the song, and that's why I really love this example of. It's the same song, but it's three different samples. Like nine times out of 10, if you didn't know this, you would never have any idea that these three songs all come from the same song because the three songs are so far spread apart. One of them is Eminem's My Name Is, another one is Jay-Z Streets Is Watching, and another one is the Beat Nuts, Beat Nuts Forever. So out of those three songs, which one do you think use that part of the sample best? And this is another great thing that I always say people about digging. A lot of times I've been in diggers houses, I've been in studios and diggers just love putting the record on the first five seconds. And if they don't hear anything, they go to the next song and the next song and that's it. This is the example of you had to let that record play because it's probably a six minute song. But you would have, there's no way you could have told me that those three songs, because Eminem, my name, it sounds nothing like Right. Streets is watching, which sounds nothing like beating us forever. They sound like three completely different songs. So when I found out it came, when people was like, oh, that's Slippy Sift joint, I'm like, oh, the album ain't like, nah, nigga, the same song. Like it blew my mind. But off of that one, my favorite song would be Jay Streets is watching. Um, when I heard that beat, it was crazy skill. Ski killed that beat. And Jay, that's some of Jay's dopest rhymes to me. Um, I always wondered why. They had to edit the rhymes out, but they didn't. And I will usually when that happens because the person who they sampled didn't want to allow you to curse over it, but then M is cursing over it and the beat that's a cursing over it. So I never understood why that happened, but that would be my go. Kel, for you, who used that best? Uh Eminem, J, or the Beat Nuts? I like the Beat Nuts version best. The Beat Nuts Forever is crazy. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. I love the albums, of course, but yeah, the, the, the flip is dope. It remind me of when you talk about the, the sample, like you said, I never heard a song before. But listen, uh, like you said, throughout the parts and stuff, but like not to extend it, but like Bob James Nautilus, where everybody sampled like a different part of the song that you didn't even realize was part of it, but um, nah, it'd be nuts. It's crazy, man. crazy. Man. Yeah. This joint right here, very slept on album. I feel like yeah. the beat nuts are slept on, period, but this yeah, album. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God, I love this album, Musical Massacre. Ver, what about you? I'm going to go with um, Sean Carter. I ain't going to say that was one of his best rhymes ever, like somebody did this week, last week. You know, <laughs> God did. <laughs> the, best, the best rhyme in hip hop history. Man. <laughs> Yo, it was so ironic that somebody sent me that tweet at 10 a.m. on a Saturday morning because I was like, Yo, the Jehovah Witnesses are really out on a Saturday morning. <laughs> Yeah, all my, my TL is doing. Like, this is really what I wake up to. Really right. About is this the best lyric in hip hop history in the 49 years of hip hop? And it's funny because that person went on to delete that tweet because I'm like, you, that person had to eventually even know, like, come on, bro. This, this, just, I don't even know if that's the best lyric that came out last night. So. <laughs> You know, about in 49 years, nigga, it ain't the best lyric in 24 hours, but either right. here or there. Um, so you going with uh, Jay-Z. Vey, what about you? Well, just really quick about the whole Jay-Z shit. I mean, I think I think him and Beyonce are the masters at this shit. They leave these people so thirsty for content That's from them right. yep. that when they give them something and it's not whack, they mm. go overboard on it, right? <laughs> Fucking guru is dissecting this shit like, yeah, yeah you say, yeah. put a quarter backwards. And then, like, nigga, what? <laughs> Bro, <laughs> you, you, you ain't splitting the atoms, nigga. We got it the first go round. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but see, here's the problem with y'all niggas. You don't understand Vegas. How many letters in Brooklyn? <laughs> it's eight. 
<laughs> now, if you take eight time, and you, how many O's are in Brooklyn? Two. You do know Jay started in the game with two ounces, which is two O's in the street. <laughs> now, two times eight is 16. How many bars in the verse, babe? 16. Motherfucker, yo, y'all not paying attention. So when Jay started, he's telling you how many verses are in a bar in hip hop. He started that, nigga. Y'all ain't think, y'all open your third eye, y'all. This is like Marcus and fucking Boomerang. Like, we, the bars right. on the table. Come on, man. Come on, y'all gotta add and subtract and multiply. Right. Brooklyn, eight, two O's, two ounces, 16, 16 bars. Jay was 16 when he shot his, his brother. <laughs> y'all not paying attention to what Jay doing out here, man. Y'all not. And, oh, Bang, yeah. I'm ashamed of you because you're from Brooklyn. <laughs> you're supposed to know this, man. Hey man, I can't say that he helped me clean up my credit though, man. So shout out to Jay. Yeah, he did. I, I I never knew nothing about credit. I didn't know what a credit report was before four four four. So I yeah. have to respect Jay for that. Thanks, so. shit. Yeah. yeah, I had a, I had a similar thing way back during the blueprint. Um, I think the three where he said he made the Yankee hat uh, famous. Right. And somebody I knew from somewhere else, not from New York. Was like he did, and I was like, "Nigga, I've been wearing fucking Yankee hat since I was a child." <laughs> this nigga just did what we were doing, like, like, come on, like, goddamn. So, hey, man, nobody even went to a Yankee game before Jay Z. What the fuck? Yeah, I mean, right. the stadium was free. Like, nobody was right. in there. Who knew what the Yankees were? Right. I didn't know what the Yankees were before Jay said. It's done nothing bad. Exactly. They just. They just yeah. won twenty seven championships. Twenty seven championships. But nobody, but nobody wore a hat. Nobody wore a hat though. Oh we, right, no. right, right. No, nobody right. wore a hat. It didn't matter. Nobody went to the games until Jay said it. Right. But, all right. So you going with um Jay on this? So to me, Jay has the the better song out of the three. Right. Um, but probably my runner up is the Eminem joint because I did not know that shit came from that. It's no, crazy, with, bro. Crazy. I didn't because when that beat came out, I was like, "Okay, Dr. Dre." Like, because I was like, "What the fuck is this? I ain't get this going." Yep. Um, so it's just amazing to see what they were able beat nuts. You know what they were able to do with this uh, one record. So I think yeah, they yeah. all kind of win, but yeah, Streets is watching was crazy. I ain't gonna front. I love how you say that, Vic. To me, they all win. And to me, this was just an example for for people watching that. Yeah, three different songs that sound nothing alike can all come from the same song. So right. for producers out there, stop just listening to the first 10 seconds of a record because there's some shit in the middle that, that that can, you know, be your bread and butter. Because that Eminem part, which was the bigger record, is towards the end. So mm. you would you would have got the streets and watching part. You probably wouldn't even got the beat us part, but you wouldn't have got the one that sold what three, four million records. Well, what about you? Yo, I'm gonna go with the beat nuts, man. Uh beat nuts for is crazy. Yeah, my man Juju said, East or West, even if you're wearing a vest, back. they're going to buy you with a crowbar dug in your chest. Dug in your chest. <laughs> how, how crazy is that to start a song off with? You know what Bro. I'm saying? And yeah. again, I know they're not the most lyrical, but there's so many beat nuts quotables yeah. that, I, that I use. Like that nigga Juju says something like, bury your ass where God won't even find you. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Uh, bury somebody and God can't even find you like this nigga. Not to mention the beat nuts have one of my favorite songs that is on my heart right now called Find That. So if you owe me money, you better find that shit. <laughs> behind that shit. So also one of my favorite beat nuts songs. P, what about you? Which one are you going with? I got beat nuts. Um, but I do love that you kind of put this on the list, Kill, because um, again, like what everyone said, I, I love how they don't sound anything alike, but then that one original kind of connects them all. And um, again, like like everyone said, I just love the different uses of the different parts of the track. And um, but yeah, but for me, it's beat nuts all the way. All right. The last joint we are going to end with is a Isaac Hayes song called Bumpy's Lamb. Mm -hmm. Mob D used this for Back At You which was kind of remixed for right back at you off the album this was on the sunset park album they used it first little kim used it second off her album for this song called drugs dr dre used it the third time for explosive erica badu used it for the fourth time for bag lady and pusha just used it with kanye 
for the fifth time. Well, he's coming in fifth place for his song Santeria on the day come. Now, for me, I've got to go with, and this was hard because, boy, do I love Back At You. I had to go with Explosive because when I heard Explosive off of 2001, that may be my favorite corrupt favorite corrupt verse ever. Corrupt to me lost his goddamn mind on Explosive. Like you more, you more of a bitch than a bitch. bitch. A bitch. Yeah. You know, my nigga. <laughs> nigga. I and and, and 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 that was 2000 when that came out. And nigga, I say that all the time in 2022. So I gotta go with explosive. Um, and just for people out there, Bumpy's Lambent was only used for mob and explosive. I want to say then the soul. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Explosive used the same sample, but it was the Soul Brothers version of it. So for diggers out there. That's kind of like the difference right there. Of course, out of those four songs or five songs, which one are you going with? Bob's Back At You, Dre's Explosive, Erica's Bag Lady, Little Kim's Drugs, or Pusha Santeria? I'm going with Mob Deep. Um, I just, I, I love the, I just love Mob Deep's song overall better. Um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Everything about it, I like better. All right, bro, what about you? I like every song on this list. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, like I should, you know what, real? That's a very better way to say it. I love every song on here. Like every, every song one of the songs. Lil Kim's drugs is drugs that's probably my favorite best. song off of hardcore. Off of her album, yeah. I was about to that's say that. my favorite song off her album. So that's a good way. All these songs, and that's why I saved this one for last. Because to me, you can't go wrong with you can't really go wrong with any of these songs. But to me, this is probably the hardest to pick from because yeah. all four of them are incredible. All of those songs are fire. I love Santa Um I'm gonna go with Mob Deep though. Um, that that right back back at you. That the re yeah that's is that the joint where P says lift you off hit you lift you off your ass like ski lift. Ski lift yeah yeah. Uh -huh. Go back big stiff niggas yeah with niggas you yeah. Then had the little then had the little sound effects lift you off your ass like like ski. <laughs> Like that nigga hit you with the little gunshots. Like, yo, man, goddamn, man. Man, when he was in his bag, there was not too many people walking the planet Earth that were right. as nice as he. Good don't God. forget the don't forget the video when he said that he had the little Mac Ten on his chain piece and he mm -hmm. shot it at the camera. I was like, damn, this nigga just nice. He just <laughs> time is crazy. Like, yeah, he is. was he. Good God, good God Almighty. Vague, which one you going with? Uh, well, like y'all said, man, I like all of these records, but when I heard explosive West Coast shit, nigga, I was like, oh, my God, this shit is crazy. Like, you know, the way he set that off, the energy, just everything. Right. Oh, my God. Yo, I, yeah, I, man. it took me years to even get pet to know that there was a rest of this song. Like, <laughs> I just nah. stayed stuck. On corrupts part, like I would get the Warren G. I mean, um, Nate Dogg's hook, but then it would always come back to the beginning. Like it would just keep mm -hmm. coming back to corrupt, man. And I, I like, like, cause I, you know, I listen to them all again because you sent the links. And um, it's just when you get to explosive, it's like, damn, I like what he did with that. Like it's cause yeah. drugs and Pusha T joint are similar, right? Yeah. Cause you can you can hear the sample much clearer in there. But you can hear that it's different. It's the same, but it's different on explosive. And it's just a it's just an energy, man. This is fucking Dr. Dre, man. Like I know he'd be making niggas do a hundred takes, but I think I'd be like, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you doing one song though. <laughs> but right. I'm doing it because it's a master, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, bro. I feel you. Vern, what you got, bro? It's a battle between Little Kim and um Erica. Okay. Kim, okay. Kim, Kim, like, like floated on that track, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's like she melted into the track, and then you know, Badu just took it somewhere. So that, that's my pick. Funny thing, and I've always say this all the time that I thought Erica Badu's bag lady was about fighting homelessness. So you know, <laughs> there we go with that one right there. So, uh, Kel, what you got up for this one, bro? I can't. I can't go with Queens in this one. I, I, I Doctor Explosive for me. Yeah, yeah, man. That's... Corrupt got so many great verses, but this is by far like I don't even know what number two would be. This is 
this is kind of like one, two, three, four, and five. Like this is like his best five verses right here. Well, this is a joint I would have wished I was. I would say New York. I would say New York. New York. His verses on that were crazy too. So, uh, yeah, so, I, I mean, I like um, uh, huh? Uh, no, what'd you say, Vic? Stranded on death row. Yeah, that's that. Mm-hmm. And again. All the corruption. I was like, yo, who the fuck is this? Like, <laughs> yo, all the corruption is crazy, but just right. that explosive, just that energy, just, it was just, I would have loved to see that studio session. I would have just loved to see, you know, and again, Vague, I don't know how y'all rappers do it. So I'm just always intrigued. Like, yo, what, what were you, what was in your mindset when you like walk me through? this verse and how you came up with this shit like did you see a nigga acting more bitch than a bitch and you just remember that shit you know, i think what? i saw the answer to that for corrupt because i was like what? damn that person so much more than he ever cursed yeah. wasn't this around the time like with the whole foxy brown and mm. who, who was messing with foxy i can't remember corrupt was corrupt corrupt he was beefing with somebody like dmx or somebody like that i can't remember who it was oh what right? It yeah, somebody else. it was Foxy. Yeah, Foxy messed with two people, but I don't know who else. Yeah, there was a there was a beat. It was, it was oh, okay. It was over Foxy. It was, Foxy. It was over Foxy though, and corrupt was like, I was like, yeah, this thing is just cursing, like he mad as shit, like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's down high. It was, so yeah, it like, I yeah. All right. Well, no doubt, y'all, Porsche. Good looking to you and your man for coming up with the topic. I appreciate you guys taking the time. This is probably the most most homework assignment I had to give people to listen to all these joints and everything like that. So I appreciate y'all. Kel, let them know where they can get at the number one Knicks fan that I know and, and everything. I didn't know baseball was your first love. I thought it was the Knicks. So uh, You know what? The Knicks are my first love, but I love baseball the sport. I love the baseball sport the baseball better. But all right. Knicks, after not getting down to Mitchell today, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So we'll see if um, I'm sorry. Did I miss something? Like Donovan went somewhere I else. Cleveland. Oh, he went to yep. Cleveland? Yeah. Cleveland. Oh, damn. I ain't even speak that. Who they had to give up? Colin seven, seven, 17 future picks in Colin Sexton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they gave up a lot of picks. Colin but they kept the young, but they kept the young Garland, Garland, right? Yeah. They Garland's kept. still there. They gave Sexton. Sexton. And Mobley, right? They kept Mobley. Yeah, they kept Mobley too, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Kept, yeah. Okay. Got a, got a nice team, man. Yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice yeah. four right there. He's right. gonna be on be fire, bro. The whole East. I mean, yeah. there ain't gonna be no no easy out most nights. Well, well, like I don't know if you saw the report from Eddie today. Ben Simmons and his fiance broke up, so he's not gonna be able to play this upcoming season because of the stress of the breakup. So I don't know how how, but he still wants to get paid though. He still wants to get paid. <laughs> Um, so, but he doesn't feel like he's capable right now after this breakup of performing right. So he's going to take this season off. Um, so I don't know about the Nets, but yeah, Kel, let them know where they can get at you, good brother. Uh, at Big Kel on Instagram and at Kel Davis on Twitter. All right, Vern, let them know where they can get at you if you if they are trying to buy a house. Where do they got to get at you, bro? At Be the Lone Clothes on Instagram um, and on Twitter, B Chandler Ten. All right, Veg, where can they get at you, brother? You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Vegas World INC and check out my podcast, Hip Hop Twitter, which uh, in a recent episode we featured Porsche. We had a good time. It was dope to, uh, to hang out and have some laughs. All right, no doubt. Rel, what's going on with you, brother? Uptown Rel, uh, Uptown Rel 215 on the ground. JVan215 on Twitter. Uh, Kill, what cakes you got on today? Uh, I had on the Carmines. Okay. I had on. Woo, them joints is nasty, bro. Yeah, them yeah. Them joints is nasty. <laughs> them joints is nasty. And Pete, where can I get at you? On Twitter, at Shoshay La Porsche and Vegas. I had a great time on the show. Um, I hope everyone checks it out. We definitely had some laughs, and yeah, it was dope. All right, y'all know what it is with me, Kill889, Twitter, IG. Um, me and Burns, new album, Idle Mind, still out. Me and Vegas, Wolfmatic, still out. That's at VegasWorldBandCamp.com. VegasWorldInc.BandCamp.com for Wilmatic. Uh, Griot, VRN.BandCamp.com for Idle Mind. 
Um, Porsche, I want to thank you again. We had a dope uh, Twitter uh, spaces this week about how to support spaces. artists. Spaces, thank you. I came up with six different ways for people on how they can support indie artists. So um, we'll probably be doing a backup of that, like to kind of recap everything that we talked about. Uh, but yeah, I will check y'all next week, man. Dope show, y'all.